Welcome folks, thanks for joining us. I see we got a lot of friends, old friends, new friends, everybody up in the chat. Uh, so we are live on both Twitch and on YouTube. Uh, but today we're gonna be doing a lot of fun stuff. So I would suggest, you know, today Twitch or YouTube is fine. As we get farther into the week, which I'll explain what this week is, you might wanna migrate over to Twitch because of some of the fun stuff we're gonna be doing. But before we get too started, let me, let me, let me tell you like what we're doing here. Let me tell you what we're doing here. So this is like a really fun, special event. Uh, we've been collaborating with the fun folks at Notch um, to put this together. And what this is, is we have with us today a very special guest, Armin, who is the product specialist and head of training at Notch. And over the course of the week, we're basically gonna live build an interactive online installation and we're gonna show you the whole process that we go through. We'll release all the project files for download at the end of it. And you can kind of talk, well, I guess we'll talk through it, but you guys can ask us questions. You know, we can take different left turns if, if any requests come in. And then by the end of it, on the front, so here's our, let me tell you the schedule. You can also see the schedule where, right there, right there. So today's focus is gonna be on building our notch content, talking about how to build that notch content. We're going to go into Wednesday. That's going to be more of a focus on like, yo, now we have notch content. Let's bring that up into touch designer. Let's get that integrated. Let's get some Twitch commands controlling it. From there, we're going to move on to Friday and Friday should be fun because what Friday is going to be is kind of like a live installation. So we're going to have that installation live on screen. Everyone's going to be able to play with it. And we're going to be kind of in the side taking Q and A, you know, if you guys got questions about, oh, how did you do that? Or what if you wanted to change that to something else? We got you covered on that. So today's plan mostly, we're gonna talk about a high level overview of what we're building. I wanna introduce Armin, of course, my good friend. And then Armin's gonna kind of talk us through a little bit what he's building and I'll be real. So there's, there's, and I'll probably bring on Armin before we do this conversation, but this is a real life simulation. I should, it's, the be, it's like we're playing The Sims, but for interactive and immersive media because just like in real life, we didn't really plan what we're going to be building too much. You know, literally last week on a call on Monday, uh, we got on a call and we're like, what are we doing? Set up our whole infrastructure. You know, Armin, I think, spent a couple days. Then I got it and I spent a couple days. And then we basically have our end product. So we're going to be talking through that. Some of the stuff we're going to do live, some of it you'll be able to reference from the videos after. Um, and I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And I see up in the chat, we, this is a sweet fire. This is not a simulation, folks. This fire... You know, when you put up a whiteboard, you never really think about the fact that maybe that everything on the other side of the room is going to get reflected into your whiteboard. But yeah, it's, it's, I'm in Canada and it's getting cold. So this is like a necessity right now. But I digress. I am watching our Twitch chat over here. We got our YouTube chat over here. So anytime throughout the stream, if you do have a question, if you've got a comment, please let us know. We're always happy to discuss. So with that said, I'd like to introduce my good friend, Armin. Armin, let me bring you up on screen right now. Give me a second here. There Hello he there, is. ladies and gentlemen. Good to be here. Good to... <laughs> am I, am I you're on? You're on, you're on, here? you're on, you're on. Hello, Albert. How are you? Awesome. So it's good to be here, guys. Uh, good. Thank you for inviting me here. And I have to mention that it's cold here too, as I'm in Norway. So we're probably quite close in the, yeah. the latitude around it's just... You're on, on one side and I'm on the other. Uh, yeah, as Elbers mentioned, we had a couple of days, both of us, to do a couple of things to sort of build this out. So depending on how you want to go with this, Elbers, uh, do we just show overall uh, current state? Because we obviously tested a couple of things already. Mm -hmm. And then I would jump into the notch side of things and show where do we start and when do we go from there. I think uh, yeah, that's a good plan. So I think well, a good way to start also is, you know, one of the reasons why we want to do this is that there's a big update that came out for Notch, including lots of new features that were really targeted at virtual production. And if you're out there in the world, you know, we can't have regular events anymore. And all the clients are coming in and they're like, hey, can we like take the thing we were going to do and like push it up to Twitch? Or can we take the thing we're going to do and make it virtual? Uh, and Notch was really responsive to that, releasing all kinds of new nodes that cover virtual production needs, templates, samples, explainers. Like, do you want to take a second just to talk about some of the new stuff? Oh yeah, good point. So we released a whole uh, batch release specifically focused on virtual production. So 
We notice that there's high demand for that and the workflows can be simplified and advanced for uh, this from our side. Mm. Uh, and that's exactly what we did. So if you find yourself having two minutes to visit our uh, NotchVFX YouTube channel, you'll find an overview video of that. Mm. So basically stating all the new nodes and all the new techniques and then specific tutorials for all the specific new things available. But just to mention a few, uh, there's new tools for optimization. Uh, there's new tools for uh, camera signal routing to the AR part of things and to the uh, say LED part of things because mm. usually you have like two plates one next to the other if you're doing AR kind of a stuff for your virtual production so all of that is available and to be honest quite a few techniques that are available in the new patch release we will be applying when we're going to be talking about this scene right here today mm. so you are not missing out anything if you just stick around and just watch this perfect and I just put a link in the chat for folks uh, we also on our blog just did a really quick rundown of you know if, if you wanted to know what's in the new release in a minute you just read those couple hundred words as fast as possible and and you kind of will understand and then you can go to the notch uh vfx youtube page where they're going to have like more in-depth stuff than my little patch rundown notes yeah so so just to just to re just to wrap up the the whole intro bit mm -hmm. of the of the conversation about the new patch release, uh, we are super happy and proud of the fact that this is non-destructive workflow. So you can choose things that you want to alter, you can choose things that you want to bake, you can choose things that you want to optimize or leave dynamic on screen at all times. So this is really nice. And again, we're gonna see a couple of those live today. Great. So I think to your point, what we can do is I'll quickly show the project that I have running on my machine, and it's got the notch blocks already integrated everything kind of basically like rigged up and I'll kind of just show you a quick demo and then Armin had a really good idea which was we're going to show you actually the behind the scenes process of how we actually came about this because we have some fun flow charts that we made of like this connects to this you know it's like a real MacGyver situation uh, but there's a lot of cool features that we're going to show you uh, including some remote I mean I should say it's like extra it's double remote because it's not just remote editing of notch blocks on the same network, but like remote editing from Norway to Canada. So I think that's cool too. So we'll show that chart, we'll talk a little bit about that, and then we'll dive into Armin's session where he's gonna talk about how he built this stuff. So let me switch over to my screen share here. Great, so the platform you all know and love, Touch Designer. And We'll talk about what's really happening deeper in this project as we go through uh, the Wednesday session, which is going to be like really building this out. But to give you a high level overview, we've got an area in this where we got Twitch stuff happening. So all the Twitch chats coming in live. I've got that routed into different button presses and controls. We've got an area where I have built three little mini games inside a touch designer, kind of like this 8-bit arcade games. And I, I, I guess we forgot to say what the theme was, Armin, but it's like a... It's a wacky <laughs> that's, game that's a show. Good point, actually. Do you like well cuz I feel like you really led a good amount of like the the fun and wackiness of it. Ah, uh, so it what well, we I'll put it on screen also while you're explaining it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Please do. Please do. So as uh, Elbrus explained in his uh, emailing list, uh, we wanted to make something interactive that would be controlled by a Twitch chat, uh, and that was a challenge and, uh, and a fun task at the same time. So we figured the best thing to do is to make a virtual environment as an arcade. So if you remember back in the 80s, if you watched the Stranger Things arcades, mm. those were huge things and they were super bright and colorful. So we figured, you know what, we're going to do an arcade and we're going to have three games. And just to make things fun and complex, we're going to make sure that while people are playing one or the other game, there's an option to switch out the game with a command without any warning or with a little warning. Yeah. So it's going to be a bit of a havoc and, and a bit of a quiz and a bit of a, do you go up, down, left, right? Well, I don't want to spoil the game. Yeah, yeah, we, well, we'll get there. We'll but anyways, there. it's an arcade. It's an arcade. There's three games that you will be able to play Friday. Uh, there is uh, winning trigger animations. There's losing winner, uh, losing <laughs> animations. And there's even a, a chat corner where uh, me and Elvers are hanging out, will be hanging out Friday. Uh, it's going to be more and more clear once, once we actually jump through and mm. start talking about different points of this. But Elbus is actually making a good job on showcasing the majority of this rig. I mean, it, it's thanks to the parameters you exposed. They, they just make it easy to do this, you know? And I think that's one of the cool things that we're going to talk about this week is how really, like, 
deep you can go with exposing stuff, how those kind of workflows can work. Because as you can see, like I've got a ton of parameters here to trigger stuff like, you know, like our game over animation, like somebody falls out of the ceiling. Uh, I've got all these controls to switch between uh, different camera positions. We can see like, I've even got Twitch chat rendering and integrated into the scenes, uh, into the screens in the scenes. We've got an area where, you know, me and Armin are, are kind of like, wait a second, let me, let me center myself up here. Here we go. We're, you know, we're, we're up. Our video is both going up to you guys and going into the little chat corner. We've got fun and yeah we got i mean as armin said there's so much like fun little stuff that that we built into this and we're going to go through talking about that talking about how we put it together all that fun stuff um so with that said let me switch over and show you guys a little bit of the background of what we actually have set up in terms of our workflow and actually uh let me check uh, make sure we got no like crazy questions here for a second uh where we got here I'll, I'll jump on straight away and say that this will be recorded and will yes. be available for viewing via uh, interactive immersive channels. So Twitch and YouTube likely for storage. Yeah, these will be recorded. They'll be available both on our YouTube and our Twitch. Uh, <laughs> Twitch holds the VODs for 60 days, but it'll be available on our YouTube basically as long as YouTube exists, which I'm hoping is for a really long time. So uh, with that said, let's dive into this little chart because it looks crazy. Listen, I know you look at this chart and you're like, what is this like? Rube Goldberg, but it's just because I was really explicit with everything. You know, it's it's really not that hard. And I think a good place to start is I'm over here on the right side. I'm Elbers. Armin's over here on the left side. And a big chunk of how we've routed our video signals is Armin's webcam and microphone are going to OBS.ninja, which is a, a really cool tool. I can even kind of show you. Actually, I have it open here. Look at it. Actually, no, I'm not going to show now. I'll show it later. I'll show it later because just in case I don't want somebody joining our room by by accident <laughs> in air quotation marks. Hello and welcome. Yeah, hello. Oh, hey guys, what's going on? Um, so I'll show that stuff later, but basically Armin has two streams open inside of our OBS.ninja room. One is for a screen capture. One is for his webcam and microphone. I'm also routing two streams into our OBS Ninja room, one for screen capture, one for webcam. All of those streams go from OBS Ninja into my, sorry, into my OBS the non-Ninja version of OBS, the regular OBS. Uh, inside of there, I got all of our scenes laid out, the templates set up. I mean, that's what you're seeing when you're looking at the live stream is OBS basically compositing all those browser sources together, uh, which surprisingly is holding up pretty well on my Lenovo X1. Uh, and you'll see as we kind of get through this, my machines are going to be real taxed uh, because I'm, I'm normally a traveling man. You know, I don't have a, a big 3080 sitting in an office. Thank you, Armin, for making some sick optimization so it could drive exactly. on yeah. that. Exactly, yeah. And it runs pretty well. Welcome, Considerably on a five-year-old laptop on my 970M, all this runs pretty hype. So we'll, we'll get there. So then the other really fun element, which we're going to talk more about on Wednesday than today, is that me and Armin have actually set up a private VPN between the two of us using a software called Zero Tier. And Zero Tier is... I'm really excited about it. You know, we talked about it in the HQ Pro. We have a workshop that one of our teachers, Matthew Reagan, put together about remote production. And Zero Tier is really cool because it takes like five or 10 minutes to install, set up. And all we both do is join the same network and we can send OSC back and forth, you know, from Canada to Norway as if we're on the same local network. Uh, we can send NDI. Although NDI, I would suggest not sending it over the Zero Tier because using OBS Ninja, we found to be kind of like, a lot more stable, a lot more better quality. But it really is like we're on a local network, which allows Armin to do fun stuff like remote yeah, to, edit. To add to Elber's, to add to Elber's point, uh, Notch and, and any media server, especially, well, let's say, let's just focus on touch today. So Notch and touch can actually handshake via network editing. Hence, if Elber's is working on, uh, let's say, the integration mm -hmm. part and more of a code part or routing things and making sure that everything runs the way it was envisioned, uh, he can still comment on things for me saying like, oh, I would like to have this texture there, or can we have this dimmer, lighter, bigger, smaller? And I literally do all these things logged into his uh, touch designer's file yeah. via network editing. So that's kind of powerful because we both can work at the same time on the same project from our ends and then just save it up, repile, uh, recompile, and we're good to go once we're done. And that's also like, that's halfway across the world. <laughs> that's the crazy part for me. Like we can do that 
halfway across the world like really easily and zero tier there's a there's a free tier of it so you don't have to like pay just to try it out uh i think you can even get like a bunch of machines on a network without paying so definitely something to check out we'll talk more about it on wednesday when we get it up and running and i'm bringing stuff up into touch designer but that's kind of the that's really you know that's the egg under the chicken here if if i so take my farming terminology to the next level that's the egg under the chicken um <laughs> And I think with that said, yeah. like, do you want to hop over into Notch and then like start? Actually, you know what we should do? I, there, I, listen, I've, people who know me know I'm, I'm just like off the cuff all the time, but I do have a schedule here. And there's one point that I want, we should quickly talk about before we dive into your Notch session. And I'm going to go back to our two by two little setup here for, for chit chat. Oh yes, that sounds good. I think the big question. Should I look to the left or to the right to see you properly? Are you yeah, you're uh, that right? that side, that side, that side, and I'll look I'll look over to you. I think this I think I'm looking to the right direction. Um, okay, please. The question that I think is on a lot of people's minds, maybe it should be on their minds, but why is this important? Why do we care? Like, why is this cool and fun and new? Um, I have my own answers as a touch designer developer, but I guess from the notch point of view and and your perspective. Like, why is this interesting for you? And why is this cool? And why is this something that we're like, yo, let's, let's do this live. Let's do it on stream. Let's show some people this, this setup that we've got. Well, I think every single piece of software has its strengths that it plays into. Uh, and you just have to recognize that touch is probably the best in the world when it comes to shaking hands with every single unit of information available. So it, uh, it, it makes sense that the, uh, a software that is very good and very fast in making graphics, which Notch is, shakes hand with touch, which can enable you to do craziest connections ever. And uh, if you can spend a couple of days with someone who knows touch in and out as Elbers does and build something cool, uh, that's that's probably the best course of action right there. And hopefully that shows the dynamics of the two softwares and how do they actually come together. Mm. Because uh, this is not a competition. This is a, this is a marathon to deliver the best project or the best product uh, possible. Uh, talking broad strokes mm -hmm. when you're in production. So you should always try to find a tool that best fits the, the bill of what needs to be delivered. So I think with that said, actually touch and notch, they glue themselves together quite well to deliver some fantastic things. And I think we're going to be spending this whole week proving that point. I think so. And I, I think one of the best points that... I really resonate with was different softwares have different strengths and you know touch designer being like this do anything tool you know a trouble that a lot of people had and myself included I'm not saying like oh I could like totally overcome this you guys can't like you know it, it's very much for me a problem also on the day-to-day -day. it's if I need to make really good looking content quickly you know, I'm often finding myself using these crazy tricks that I know and that stuff maybe isn't as accessible for folks or I'm just sitting there like everybody else jiggling sliders trying to get like materials to look good um, and not to take away from touch because it can do amazing content. But to your point, it, you know, the tool that is made to make amazing content can do it so much faster. Like whereas it might take me, you know, a week or maybe even two weeks to make what you made in this notch project in, in a, a matter of like two days, I think you were saying, uh, that's really the difference. It's not so much about like, can these apps do it? It's that taking advantage of the best parts of all these applications, especially in this age that we live in where notch and touch can integrate so well. It's like, why wouldn't you, right? It's like, you've got a saw in one hand and a hammer in the other hand, I could take on anything. You know, why would I not use the saw and try and cut wood with a hammer, right? Like it, it, it's, it's kind of crazy to me that some folks are still like, oh no, you know, I'll just, I'll just do it in touch. I, and I could agree, you know, there, there's some places where maybe the integration like maybe doesn't work or, or, you know, you're in some kind of special situation. But I think for the majority of people, uh, the ability to make really beautiful content quickly inside of Notch and then have that integrate directly into your touch designer project that's, you know, connecting to all your hardware, talking to web APIs, talking to the screens and video IO, I think that's like a really powerful thing and something that we've been kind of talking about a lot like on our blog and on our YouTube and something that was really fun for me to, to work with you to like put this all together. So that's kind of like my, that's my take on it. I think if you're working in touch designer and you need to build content, like Notch is really the best tool for the job, I think for that. 
Yeah, so it's it's not like it's not a competition. It's actually a handshake delivering the product, the end product for uh, for your customer, for yourself, for your installation. So well said, well said, Elbrus. Yeah, agreed completely. Great. So then, with that said, I mean, let's hop over to your screen where you are going to have your notch window open. Let me turn it on here. <laughs> yes, uh, that is very true. Great. You're you're live now with Notch. So do you want to? you know, give people a tour and then dive into how it was put together. And, you know, I kind of leave the floor. Armin's going to be like our chief right now. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be in the chat asking questions. I'm going to probably be asking Armin questions, even though he's going to be like, yo, just let me like work. But we're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. So Armin, take it away. You, you know what to do. You know what to say. So uh, I take it that some of you guys actually use Notch on a daily basis. Some of you perhaps haven't seen it ever. So instead of starting from the complete bottom and saying like, hey, this is the UI, there's five panels, this, 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 and this, this, that, uh, I'm going to talk about this project and uh, some things that you might find interesting. Shoot it as a question. More than likely, we have either an e-learning school about it, a tutorial, or uh, a stream already available where it talks in depth about specific thing. Um, so with that said, I'm just going to point you out to point you to the correct uh, learning source, and we're going to carry on talking about this more on a surface level where everybody gets to get something out of it. So hopefully there will be a fun technique for people who already use Notch, mm. and uh, hopefully there will be some inspiration of how this can actually be useful for a person who maybe never turned on Notch before. So with that said, this is the more or less finished scene that we are aiming to deliver to Elbers today. The idea is that we're going to split this to several uh, chapters when we're going to be talking about this. And I have made some notes. First of all, we're going to talk a tiny bit about uh, modeling and scene dressing. We're not going to do exact modeling, but we're going to use available uh, assets to build this. So basically, even today, if you turn on Notch, you actually can start working on the scene and deliver something very, very close to this if you have a couple of extra textures lying around on your desktop. Uh, so once we're going to be done talking about modeling and scene dressing, we're going to talk about controls. And Elbers showed a little bit how you pan around with camera, how a poor guy drops on the floor and states that it's game over. Uh, and then we're going to talk about parameter exposing. So basically, all of the workflow that is required for Elbers to take over these things that, well, we build as a dynamic triggers. And it's actually super easy and fast, so it's not going to take that long at all. And then we're going to talk a tiniest bit about optimization, and that's going to cover quite a few things of what is new in our latest patch release. Uh, we're going to use some new nodes available to, well, basically make sure that uh, Elbers, Elbers' Lenovo can handle this. Uh, and then we're going to export and test the block. And I'm going to show you FX uh, Player, which is our media server emulator. It allows you to double check if you actually did a good job enough mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, let's say, optimization or general exposing of parameters. So you can twiggle and test things without having touch license or any other media server license. You can actually double check, make sure, ship it away. And that's a good point just to uh, chime in on that VFX Player. We got a YouTube video coming up, I think, later today. That just highlights that because it's it, you showed me that last week and I was kind of blown away that that feature isn't like right big in bold letters somewhere that's like hey are you making content for other media servers click this like use this app to like just test it and make sure like everything works as you think it does. To be honest, that was a, a gem of a discovery for me too. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, it's more. It, it's very simple thing, and it's more maybe for developers to use, but I find it that it's very useful for designers as well when it comes to this specific thing, double checking and uh, communicating. So yeah, we'll, we'll get back to that quite a lot towards the end of the stream. So when I said that you can actually open Notch and deliver something like this by the end of the day, I, I wasn't kidding. So when you launch Notch, uh, there is a hello tab that uh, is prompted uh, to your face. So it has recent files, templates, and samples. So if you head to samples, there is a VPTV stage gray box. So just grab that. Once you grab that, you will see that you have this arrangement right here. Mm -hmm. So basically, we, we didn't build uh, anything from scratch. We just took a preset or available template that's shipped with Notch, and we worked it out to our needs. We changed them. We changed textures. We changed a little bit of lighting. We added some uh, models of humans. We added some interactive points. And we were good to go. So this will be our starting point right here. So 
before we start making changes to the scene, I'm going to explain a little bit what you see here, and then we're going to delete things that we don't need because this is prepared for the virtual production. Mm. So for a production that has like camera on the dolly and all these crazy things, we don't need none of that. We're going to simplify things quite a lot. So here we have a bit of lighting system. So environment mappings, uh, screen space reflections, uh, regular area and uh, spotlights. We have a path tracer node available should we choose to, let's say, make an advanced lighting system and bake things in, which we can and probably will do towards the end. Uh, here in the top, we have post effects. And post effects could be anything from a little bit of color correction touch to, let's say, anti-aliasing fixes or glows. And as you see, there's different color uh, codes for different nodes. So if post effect, if we're talking about post effects, it's going to be gray. If it's light, it's going to be yellow. And if it's geometry, it's going to be light blue. And that's true throughout the whole system. As you see, there's quite a few of nodes that we have here. And they all are color coded. And the color code makes more and more sense once you start to work mm. and progress with Notch. So as mentioned, all of these nodes right here, they are the geometry nodes. So as you notice, they have this very fancy snowflake icon and that means that they are frozen uh, frozen for the sake of better performance so since we are still in the process of building things we're going to unfreeze geometry so this node right here is optimization tool that allows you to save the compute power you so that notch wouldn't think that these are dynamic meshes they're literally solid unmovable things so i'm deleting these straight away as we don't need those now i notice as soon as i delete the freeze geometries the snowflake icon is gone. These are unfrozen. And all of these freezes and some of the general nodes are hooked up with the bake lighting nodes. So we are not baking things just yet. So I'm going to unhook that too. So I'm literally just pressing delete. Uh, to be honest, when it comes to optimization, man's best friend is delete key. Sounds horrible, but that's very true. I love that. That's my We're favorite. That's my favorite key. new expression. <laughs> Oh, I cannot take credit for that. That's actually Will. Will Smith. We have Will Smith working for Notch, and that's exactly what he said. He has like abundance of uh, experience. He spent 20 years or 15 years in gaming industry. He delivered the uh, Batman Arkham City series. He was the lead environmentalist and and, uh, and the person responsible for optimizations there. Damn. So he knows a lot about yeah, that. Yeah, that's and pretty said, good. Pretty good credit the right there. Is the way to go. So uh, as you see, everything now is connected via null. So all of this geometry is connected via null, and you can actually move the whole scene via click of uh, a button or a slide of a slider. Uh, since we want to make things fast and we don't want to spend time hooking links up by hand, I propose that we delete the null as well. All of a sudden, nothing is visible on the screen, and that's fine. So what we're going to do, we're going to take all of this geometry, and we're going to press Control-R. Control-R is... Uh, a shortcut that connects everything to the root. So I'm reconnecting all of those nodes that we had before to the very root of the system. And Notch works by having all of the nodes available in a node graph connected to the root. So if you come from, a, let's say, After Effects background, you usually have composition settings. I'm sure that Touch Designer has sort of a similar thing where you have overall scene settings. So this is the overall scene settings for Notch. And everything has to be connected in one way or the other to the root. We're going to come back to that uh, a little bit more as we progress. So now the scene or the template is more or less ready for us to start uh, breaking it apart, moving it around, and texturing. Uh, I don't think we're going to need the roof. So the easiest way to get rid of that is by pressing and then selecting it. So that's exactly what I did. So it's selected in the viewport. How do I find it in the node graph? Well, all you have to do is press F1 twice, and the node that is corresponding with the viewport selection comes to the very center of the graph. So that's super handy. Deleting it straight away. Yet again, delete button helps lots. So what else don't we need? I think these lights are not necessary. So again, I'm pressing P. I'm going to try to select this from the screen. Be gone. And there's another one. We weren't going to need this one. Let's see. So I bet that these are all light related nodes. Let's just delete those. Yep. We still have this little fella hanging. So let's see. It's probably this one. Yes. So let's get rid of that one too. Since our arcade has three screens, I think that's exactly where we're going to start. We're going to make sure that we have three screens available for us. So there's one here in the center. So I'm selecting it. F1 twice. I'm brought to the screen. 
I'm going to connect everything, the 3D node and the materials connected to it. So these are materials and these are material input pins. Again, for people who are using Nudge the in and out, this is absolutely not the news. I'm just trying to be a little bit more helpful for uh, people who come from Touch Designer. Right, so I'm selecting everything, copying it. I'm going to drop it off here. I'm going to press Control R to connect it to the root. And I'll just move it off. So there's three, four uh, nice shortcuts to always remember. So it's ERTY. ERTY is different ways to interpret 3D models. So position, rotation, scale, unified scale. In this case, we want rotation. So I'm going to hold Shift, and I'm going to make sure that we are on a 90 degrees angle here. And more or less, we are. Let's push this screen to this wall right here. Right, so now we have our Arcade 2, or the beginning of Arcade 2. I'll make yet another copy and maybe place it here. By the way, it's placing nodes exactly where you have your mouse. So if your mouse is here and you press Control V, that's exactly where you're going to have your node dropped. So Control R to connect it again. Let's move it back. Let's rotate it via shortcut R. Let's see. Oh, I did, oh of course, it didn't connect it to the root, silly me. Right, rotation. There we are and placement next to the wall. So initial setup is more or less complete. I'm being very crude with the placements now because I don't think it's actually the focus to be super precise. What can we do now? Uh, I think the next step is uh, to add an input for a video texture on all these screens so we actually could refer to them as separate units. So. As mentioned, there's material inputs here, and they all correspond with different materials. So one of these materials is actually connected to the screen. So let's double check. Yep, this is the one. So this right here is where we can pipe in a specific uh, video or an input or output for a video feed. In this case, I have three test cards or four test cards ready. Let me find those. There we go. I'll start with the test card number one. So there are different inputs here. The first one is color texture. That's exactly where I'm going to pipe it in. And the first uh, test card we have is uh, Mr. T. That's me, right? That's that's so a younger that's version it. of me. Mr. E. You know what I'm talking about? No? No dice? Anybody? <laughs> Nobody. No, no. It's, <laughs> it's well done. You just don't have Mohawk, mate. That's the that's one piece missing. Coming soon to a theater near you. The sound effect is needed yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I think it's it's wise to mark it up with names. So I'm going to grab a geometry text. So basically, we're just going to put a name on uh, this spot right here. So in the text node, I can choose a typography that I want to use, the font. So basically, any font you bring into the resources will be available for you here in a dropdown. So I have one. It's called Arcade. Surprise. And let's give this a name. So I'm happy to take offers in uh, chat. Uh, in the chat, while somebody comes up with a defined name for this specific arcade, I'm going to call this uh, Pity No Fool. And I'll add in here. We can uh, definitely. You know, we want to make this like fun and interactive. So actually, like, there's a bunch of parts of the projects that when we were making it, we're like, you know what? Let's just we'll leave the chat to decide how we do this. So you know, like the names yeah. of the arcade stations are one of them. So by all means. People start putting in in the Twitch chat and the YouTube chat what you think would be a good arcade station name because it's you know this is a collaborative oh, yeah, and, uh, this is a collaborative situation that. you know yeah actually you are you guys are more in charge than you can you can believe yeah so these things like naming and all that that's gonna be exposed up till Friday so basically Elbers will have control over that in uh, touch mm. and I have control over that in notch so on and so forth. For now, it's Pity the Fool, or Pity No Fool. Mm. Well, let's leave it there. So both of these are standing next by. That's good. Uh, let's move on to the second screen. Let's do the same thing. So if it was test card one, let's grab the two. I remember it was a missive material that we used. Let's plug it up and let's see the second one. Second one is Mr. David Hasselhoff. So I'm going to grab a text note, make a copy of it, connect it to the root, reposition it. And um, I'm going to call this for now Hofster. So this naming convention that we're going to come up with probably going to be referred to throughout the streams during all three days, which I think is fine. So We do have a couple of good names so far, actually. We got the Children of the Null. I thought that was pretty nice. <laughs> uh, we've got Young Elbers. Yeah, uh, we've I got propose... Arcadion 1 through 3. 
I propose that I do the third one. So we have all three, and then we rinse out the actual names as they were suggested. Right, the third one, and this is live. Yeah, that's the one here. And here we have certain Mr. Magnum PI. So connecting, repositioning the text where it is. There it is. Bum, bum, bum. We're going to reposition it nicer. For now, it's just sort of like just a placeholder that we know what we are referring to mm -hmm. as we talk about these fellas. All right. So, Mr. Magnum. So, Armin, I have a question. Okay. So, we're... Yes. And you can tell Shoot. me if this is better to answer and talk about now or later. Because this is a common thing that I see, especially with a lot of touch designer folks coming over to Notch, <laughs> building their systems to export the block back to touch designer. So this example is great because you've connected a bunch of video loaders to the materials to see them on screen. Now, when you're going to yeah. go to expose those, are you going to leave the test card? Do you make a new node? Do you delete? Do you have two nodes going into it? You know, what, what is your general no, you process for, for, you know, prep, but then still being able to test in your project while also being ready to receive the texture from the media server? Yeah. Is there some secret tricks so, that you have? So this is, um, not necessarily a secret. I think it's kind of thought through. Uh, at least 90% of my use cases doesn't require any extra steps mm. outside of going to the video texture uh, input because this is a video loader. This is literally a texture loader. Mm. And then in a texture loader, you just say that uh, the texture loader selector, it could be a still, it could be an image. In our case, it's a still. This is an exposed parameter that will be overwritten in a media server that you're sending things to. Mm. So in the media server, it's uh, going to come in depending on the media server, either as a color hue rotation, as a black or white uh, space. Mm. And then you're going to be able to pipe things in. Uh, when you have a still, I think you might as well come in through the still that you designated there mm. too. So to that question, uh, whatever you have here is your working environment. Whatever you want to use in a media server, you will be able to pipe in just as easy. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I guess, that, sorry, the, the trickier question is, is I've experienced this firsthand is when you're bringing in stuff like webcams because for the exposed media uh, server, you'll have the video loader sitting there. But if you're working inside a notch, then all of a sudden you're going to need like a video in node. And then how do you manage yeah, turning those on and off based on, you know, oh, I'm about to export the block or no, I'm like working inside a notch. Or do you just pipe them both so in and call it a day? Uh, no, I usually set a little switcher depending on what media server I'm going for. Or oh, interesting. Perhaps I'm actually going for something like uh, just uh, executable. So an uh, easy way to set it up is to have two different sources like video loader and video in source or a ton of video loaders. Pipe it into the multiplex sources. And then there you have a switch or source index. Mm. So you can make sure that this becomes a, a variable. Although oh, mine should be media just bear in mind that if you expose the video loader to media server, video in source is absolutely irrelevant. Mm. Video in source, uh, video in source is relatively is is relative only in notch because yeah. we treat the camera inputs as video in sources, and video loader is all the textures, all the videos. And as soon as you expose the video loader in media server, it's anything the media server reads from camera to a video to a texture. So this right here, a uh, video in source lives only in notch because we need to define two things differently in our own system yeah. for all the exposure and work in media server. It's always, always video loader. Cool. All right. So I'm plugging this bad boy back. Uh, yeah, we have three names. We have three screens. Uh, this is a good time to start, uh, dissecting things that we need. So what we came up with as a thing with Elbers is that every time uh, a system would switch on you and uh, turn on another game, because basically there will be a little voting system and Elbers will talk about this more Wednesday. Every time there's a threshold of votes to play another game, your camera automatically will switch to another arcade. And the only visual, or, uh, the only visual uh, indication of the switch that we want to give is a color. And the color will be changing via these LED strips. So I propose that we actually pipe in some kind of a hue, or in this case, truchette, to all of the inputs that correspond with these LED strips. Let's do that. So 
I'm going to start off by finding least one that I want to grab. So again, P, there we go. That's the model, F1 to bring it to the center of the stream, screen. And that's the emissive material. Yeah, that's the material that I want to work with. I'm going to pull it a little bit back. I'm going to grab a generator as an input here for color texture. So through chat, piped in, let's zoom in. Let's give it a little bit more size. Yeah. Much has like a ton of different generators. I think you're going to enjoy finding them all. I really like the unrounded one. Maybe it could be a bit thicker. It's definitely and got a nice guess, arcade vibe to it. <laughs> it's getting there, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe it's a bit too uh, too sort of small. Let's make it bigger. So I'm going to reduce the resol resolution. And for now, I'm going to leave it something like violet. So we plugged it up to these ones, and I'm sure we can plug it up to more things. For instance, uh, this wall, or actually, no, the floor seems right here. B, double press. There, this, this one is selected now. I'm going to stop the play playback. This is the material that we want to attack. So there is the first input. That's the gray part. And this is the LED part. So I'm going to unhook this material. I'm going to find the very one that I just made with through shed, and I'm going to pipe it here. Done. Uh, I could probably do that to all of those, but I think you get the gist. So we won't going to waste time on that now. Let's try another texture. Let's try to build something nice with, uh, let's say, this one right here. So again, P to double select it. There we go. There is our main floor. So I'm going to unhook it from the material that was used there. And I'm going to add a new material here. Plug it up. I'm going to make sure that it's corresponding with the environment map. Maybe it's a little bit too bright. And I'm going to find um, graffiti texture. Yet again, I'm going to pull it to the first input. So it's there. It's a little bit too dense. So in the material, I can make sure that it doesn't uh, tile up so in such a small scale. So the UV scale. Make it a bit bigger. There we go. And there's another one next to it. Yep, this is the one. Here it is. Let's unhook this one. Let's use the same material. Now we're getting there. It's getting a little bit more funky. Uh, we probably could use the very same material now for all of these ones as well. So there it is. There's the stage element. So the whole idea is exactly that. You basically take this template and you build it as you please by changing materials as I'm doing now. Actually, for the sake of argument, I'm going to make sure that you see the texture. Mm -hmm. So if you shift double click on the video loader, you can always see the texture. So yes, Elbrus. Oh, oh, you did. You, uh, you heard my something? little, uh, <laughs> I was about to just chime in because I think that's one of the really cool things that I enjoy about Notch coming from uh, the touch designer background. And if folks aren't, I, I don't know if folks are used to getting such high quality templates and samples. Like these are basically production ready in a lot of ways. Like this, these aren't just like, oh, here, look at this. It's kind of messy. It's, it's a thing. Build it yourself after. But, you know, just like kind of we're doing in this, I really highly recommend folks take a look at the samples, the templates. Uh, also, if, if folks haven't, the interactive sample pack is super sick. Like there's just tons of really great interactive scenes already made and I'll, I'll put a link to that in the chat for folks but um is i mean it, and that's kind of like a behind the scenes thing because is that something that you guys are thinking when you're making a lot of these samples like let's make these like basically production ready yeah of course anything anything that can enable you to be creative longer than uh than than doing anything that allows you to be creative uh is is a goal for us uh, as as a it's actually a goal for us because if you spend too much time doing the technical stuff or the boring stuff, it's it's a big stopper. So we are doing our best to provide you with good starting points. So there's actually quite a few templates and samples in the splash screen. Do check them out. They are overhauled. There's quite a few new things. Anything for interactive, anything for uh, video related or 3D related. There are a lot of scenes there for exactly that. Um, the way we see it, you should be able to grab Notch and deliver crazy straight out of the bat. You shouldn't waste time on doing the boring things. We'll do the boring things for you, at least to a certain point. Yeah, and I just linked that interactive so, sample pack because that's an extra download as well with like tons of really amazing stuff. 
Yeah, there's there's quite a few things. Oh, by the way, I think we could easily grab the back wall here. Let's see if I can pick it out. Maybe we should push it to another side. Oh no, there's probably no point. Guys, to be honest, I'm set, sitting here texturizing things and moving around the 3D geometry. I think I think you get the gist that you can texturize and move around things. So we can easily say like yeah. two hours later. <laughs> two hours later. <laughs> we, later. Later. We texturize things uh, and, and we, we sort of got ready. So instead of me actually doing this, I'm just going to walk you through the things that I already did anyways. And it's going to be much more interesting to talk about uh, controls and dynamic things instead. So as you see, I just moved a couple of walls from the back here to the front. I added the same uh, graffiti texture on the floor in the center, on the sides. And these strips that are inputs in the textures, uh, or they are inputs in the 3D models, I set up with the one the, the one trichet, uh, the trichet uh, generator that we used for emissiveness. So it's all around the same control, and it's all here. So basically, the one time you're changing it, it actually changes all over the system. Mm. This is something we're going to give to Elbers to control. Then in the center here, I added a little piece for the name of the actual arcade. So here is a little fun trick that I did. Uh, I wanted to render something specific to texture. So we have a render to texture node, mm. and it allows you to create a 3D scene, render it to texture, apply it in the material if you want. So in this case, it's relatively simple stuff. So I just have one camera looking at the 3D text, and this camera and 3D text is rendered as a texture, and then piped in via video composite to the material of this 3D object. Now, the reason why I'm using the composite uh, source is because I wanted to add a text loader and I wanted to add a little graphics. So mm -hmm. in this case, this right here is responsible for the text loader. And this right here is responsible for the graphics. So with that said, uh, I'm sure we already have decisions on the arcade names. Ooh. We will need a decision of the actual name of the overall arcade too. So we're going to pipe that in. While Elbers is getting the feedback for the main arcade name, I'm going to mention that the only things that changed when it comes to the naming uh, right here is the fact that it has color now, and it actually has a little bit of a glow. If I move to this model right here, you will see that I'm using glow post effect. And glow post effect allows you to connect different nodes that are affected specifically by the glow. So in this case, all of the arcade names are glowing. Um, we've changed tiniest bit the lighting. So I deleted several lights that was there. I kept the three area lights that are available in the template. And I just added several spotlights. And as you see, there's a ton of uh, these fellas who are as well equipped with the truchette material. And they're all taken from a very nice little website called Mixamo. So it recently became a part of a Adobe family. Mm. So if you have Adobe account, you don't have to be with a paid Adobe account. You just get in there, choose the character that you like, uh, choose the animations that you prefer. Hit download button, you get the FBX, you load it to notch, notch read the BX, notch reads the bone structure, you're good to go. So that's exactly what I did. Okay, I like I'm just going to interrupt because I'm laughing at a good arcade name. Uh, the Arm Shoot. Arcade. Get it? It hurts, but that's good. You like it? I like it. No, I like it because then I, I like it. That's yeah, a good no, one. Enough. I think that one's going to make it. Um, so please give us your suggestions for arcade names. We can get those in there. Uh, and as well, as we are uh, approaching... I'm, I'm putting it straight away. What was the name again? A-R-M-Cade. So it's like, you know, the arm and Cade. Arm Cade. I love it. <laughs> yep, it's there. And I'll um, say, as we're approaching probably... that 50 minute mark now, you know, we're starting to get about halfway through. So, folks, if you do have your questions, comments, concerns, philosophical or otherwise, toss them in either the Twitch chat <laughs> or the YouTube chat. You know, we're happy to to talk about any of these processes and workflows. And actually, Ar Arvin, I had a quick little insert because I think um, the render layer is a really powerful tool. And I think for touch designer developers yeah. coming over, you know, when they think about how the project is laid out, you know, I always say like a, a really interesting way to think about it coming from touch designer specifically is that your root node is almost like one of our render tops where like all this stuff feeding through the GPU gets rendered in your root node. But then in touch designer, you know, because that's a little bit separated, a lot of times we can just make lots of render nodes or make render passes. And that's kind of exactly what that 
render layer node does, which allows you to kind of make sub so, passes that don't feed directly to the screen. Uh, and in that case, like you're using it in like a really straightforward way that I think is really interesting. So render layer allows you to put a separate pass of separate rendering pass on top of your 3D scene. So if you want to have one specific element or one specific thing in the scene that is treated uh, with a different lighting, mm. different post effects. You just put it under re render layer. Mm. In fact, uh, let's maybe grab this fella here. It's probably one of those. Or actually, we could grab all of them. There they are. I'm going to unhook them from the root, and I'm going to put them under the render layer. By the way, render layer is the node that we use now to split the virtual production's AR part yeah. and the real part or the LED part. More on that in the tutorials. And uh, if you're interested in such things, do check out the Notch VFX uh, page on YouTube. Mm. So now all of these fellas are on the render layer. It doesn't visually look much different, but if I grab something like, say, tint, notice that it applies only on them. Mm. I don't have to plug anything directly to the texture or whatever. It's literally going there. So we can even preview how they look. So you get a preview of the alpha. Like this is literally the geometry mm. that is in the render layer. That's really so cool. You can split out things as you please. So, so we've yeah, got a couple that names. Those might come quite handy. We, oh, yeah. We got a couple of fun Should... names. I'm going to read out a couple of them and then we can Should... decide what, excuse me, what we use for now. And we can also just take names later too. Like there's the, we're going to expose these things. So it'll be fun to just like switch up the names. But, We've got um, Young Elbers, spelled Y-U-N-G, like as if I was a rapper. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh -huh. We've got Children Elbers, of the Null. I'm, I'm handicapped when it comes to I'm I'm handicapped when it comes to cool name spelling. So you'll have to just type it in in a in a chat that we have. Yeah, I'll type or it I'm in right now. Grab it from the chat. Yeah, I'll type it in for you. Don't worry. There we go. We've got. Where am I catching it? Young Elbers. It's inside of our OBS room. If you got that. Oh yeah. Cool. So we got that one's a fun one. Uh, we've got Children of the Null, which is kind of dark, but also fun. Like I dig that one a lot. Uh, we've got Arcadion. Oh, that's good. So we can call something Arcadion. Uh, we got a couple good ones that came in after that. Let me see here. Children of the Null, I like it. I, to be honest, I, I kind of have a vague idea that I heard it before. So I'm just thinking, is there, is there someone in the chat that I actually know? Uh oh, we got, we got a, uh, we got plants. Uh -oh. We got plants. What are they? It's plants, right? The implants. Is that what you call them? We got ringers. <laughs> yeah. Ringers. Ringers. We got ringers. Uh, we got fool ringers. play is another one. Arcade fire. The Hoff's revenge. Uh, Hoff pong. Hoff Pong is pretty good. I kind of I kind of really like Hoff Pong. Hoff, yeah, yes, yes, Hoff yes. Pong. And I'll put the, I'll put the Pong game on that wall. That's a good one. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see Young Albers, Children of the Null, Hoff Hoff Pong and then Armcade. Pong. We'll go with those. Yeah, let's stick around with those. So, anyways, we have more or less a set up scene right now uh, we have a couple of uh, corners here so for mm. instance this one right here has a couple of screens and well we're not we're not gonna brand this but it has uh, another famous 80s star oh alf was the card. best uh, do you know how many times i watch i watch alf like every alf okay so if if so if i had to describe my comedic like influences it's like bugs bunny alf and batman that's like my comedic like that's what i model all my jokes after. So I'm very happy that Alf made it, made the cut. I, I see that we share a lot in common, to be honest. Yeah. You saw you saw my hero selection yeah. and I and I enjoy the fact that some overlap actually. That's, That's awesome. <laughs> so uh, with that said, I, I think uh, I'm gonna show a couple of controls. How do I add them? And then we're gonna switch to yet another layer where I already have all those controls available. As uh, as Elvis pointed out, we're actually running out of time. This is too much fun, and it's uh, not enough. Oh no, we have some. We, we have a whole other hour a left. Up. We got a whole hour. Don't worry. Oh, we do. Yeah, okay, we're, that's we're, good. we're the that's first good. hour is done, so we got a whole other hour to go. Because uh, I also want to get you later to show people Mixamo, because I don't think people know how sick Mixamo is. Oh, but it's it's like literally one two kind of a thing. So you just go to the Mixamo.com, log in with your Adobe account, uh, and and you just choose any of these models. In fact, you know what? Let's think. Let's make things interesting. Uh, I, I really like this. 
I really like this guy. So I'm going to grab the, the demon mutant and let's give him some kind of animation. I happen to know that there's one specific one available, which is called uh, Twerk. So I think if we give him a no little way. more arm space and we have him twerking, I think we're grabbing this. Let's just go ahead and download this. So no lie, I hadn't heard about this, this Mixamo until you showed me last week. No, no, no. Mate, you're you're so missing out. I know this, uh, this is amazing. So you can just I, so I you you know explaining for the people like me who who've like really missed this train. So you can basically get like all these models and then apply all different kinds of animations to them and then just like you you download and you're good to go. And and this is not the best part. The best part is that you can upload your character. So if you have your character in a static deposition, you upload it there. There's a little system that allows you to point out where's the elbows, wrists, and neck, and whatnot, and it will rig you up in two minutes, and you will have the whole bone structure ready. That's insane. And you download it with or without animations. In this case, we have it downloaded with animations. Uh, and then you can straight away drop it to Notch. And if you choose, well, we don't want to close. Please and thank you. Uh, and if you want to choose to use the very same thing, uh, the rig with the, with the motion capture suit, you can actually do that. Because that bone structure is befitting motion capture suits that Notch supports. The, is the, tri is the circle of life is complete, you know, like we need a Rafiki to like hold you up in front of the camera, you know, in front of like the sunrise. Was it sunrise or sunset at the beginning of Lion King? I don't remember. Chat, let me know, was it Sunrise or Sunset oh, yeah, at the beginning? You know? <laughs> That's what learning about Mixamo feels like. I just, I just remember like. inspirational music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, oh, uh, thing to point out uh, about imported 3D models, it comes in static T. So if you want to actually grab the animation that you set up, you have to go for animation set and choose Mixamo. Mm. There we go. Uh, I think it's unjust that our demon is so small. And I think it's unjust that it's so dark. So I could grab a light and just connect it so that shines on him in the center or can actually make sure that it's shining on uh, on him at all times and actually is connected to the body so light moves together with the body so i'm going to connect it to the neck right and let's just move it a little bit forward let's rotate it bring it up and i, I don't want this light to affect anything else if you notice on the light there's like different inputs and one of them is uh, affected and excluded so in this case i want to use the affected so it's only this model that is affected uh, and you know what? Let's be generous. We're not sending the stolvers just yet. Let's add some shadows as well. So enabling shadows. That's part of the optimization. Mm. You have to really slim down on things, knowing the system that you're getting for. Yeah. And uh, in this case, we had to slim down quite a lot just to make it available and running decent on a home use laptop. We'll get to that. Anyways, there we go. We have uh, Mr. Monster there enjoying himself in the very center. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to move him a little bit maybe to the back because here I want to set a camera. So we already have one camera in the scene and that's fine. Perhaps uh, let's just delete that. Let's just add a new one. So adding a camera, control R to connect. And so far I was always in a uh, orb view. An orb view is number five on the keyboard. So one, two, three, four is different views. So the standard left, right, top, bottom, five is the orb. Zero is the active rendering camera. Since our camera was in the center of the graph, that's exactly what it sees mm -hmm. now. I think that's a very horrible position. So I'm just going to make sure that I find a shot that I like, for instance, something like this. I'm going to right click on the camera and go for camera options, set the current view. Oh, that's so a really I cool do that, trick. I see that there's a yeah, that's a hand. I, I use it daily, this yeah. thing. So all of a sudden, camera jumped exactly where I set it. And if I hit zero, now I'm looking through the camera in that exact position. So how do we make sure that this camera turns left, right to see the different arcades? Well, if we put it on the null, we have different nulls available for us. So in this case, we want the geometry null. With this null, which came into the very center of the graph, so this is our null, this is our camera. So you see, it's a little bit offset. So in fact, we should probably make sure that the camera is zeroed out, a little bit higher. Yeah, that's good. Now with this null, we can set up a little system that allows us to turn. And when I say little system, I, I want to range it. So there's three digits. So let's say minus one, zero, and one. So minus one is this side, and zero is center, and the right-hand side is one. And I will do that 
with the modifier. And uh, when the modifier I want to use an, is an envelope modifier. So basically, this is sort of like a virtual slider. So you just get the value, you choose the range and the scale of it, and you can use to control things with it in Notch. In this case, I want to control heading. All I have to do is just pipe it straight to the heading. And I think a lot of touch now, designer it, folks. Working. Sorry to interrupt. I was going to say a lot of touch designer folks. You can imagine modifiers mm -hmm. are like our chops. They're like our control channels and and that kind of good stuff. So instead of scale five, maybe I'll set it to scale ninety. So now with the scale ninety, when I'm changing the value, it's actually turning nineteen degrees, ninety degrees. Mm -hmm. And if I hold Alt and go the minus, minus value, when I set minus one, it goes minus nine. So I think this definitely works. Uh, it sucks a little bit because it's super uh, rapid. It's not smooth. So to make this a little bit slicker, I can smooth the signal out. So basically I can use a smooth envelope. So I will pipe one thing through another. And now when I'm changing the animations, you see this literally gradually getting there. And we have different parameters for smoothing. So I'm going to give it a bit more speed. So three on attack and three on a decay. So let's switch through. Oh, that's nice. There we go. That's nice. I like that. It's fast. Let's slow it down. Let's try now. Yeah, there we go. So we officially have our first control, which allows us to switch through uh, different scenes. The only thing I noticed is probably our camera should be facing a little bit higher up, perhaps. Do we see the names? Like Yang Elbers. <laughs> I, I totally I like forgot. I, I didn't even see that was in there until you mentioned it. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the first control. And um, we have these corners right here. So uh, there's an idea to facilitate them with something. Mm -hmm. Obviously, ALF will not live alone. And ALF will be a scoreboard or, I don't know, whatever we come up with in the actual uh, stream. What did we, what we decide here? This is going to be our Twitch this chat. Probably will be Twitch the... chat integration. So live Twitch chat is going to be put into the scene. So for that, we can use a separate camera. For now, I'm just going to disable the one that we had. I'm going to pipe this one in. We're looking through this camera now. Let's move in. Yeah, so this is our this is our scene, or this is our setup for that specific thing. In fact, I think that it's a bit boring, so we can add one more twerk dancer here. And in this case, that will be a grandma. So let's find our grandma. Just brought it in. There she is. Let's put her in the center. And all of those, Initially, we all of those models corner. you got off Mixamo. Is that right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, exactly. And as you see, it's quite fast. I think it's going to be intrusive once we actually go live. So you can slow down the speed. Mm. Funny thing here. So if you want to slow down things, instead of a playback speed uh, reduction, let's just see what happens if I reduce. She becomes hectic. You actually have to increase uh, digits here. The reason oh, is because you give more timeline for it to play back. Mm. So it's counterintuitive, but that's exactly how it works. Yeah. Anyways, now we have a uh, granny uh, doing the twerk. That's fine. So this is our corner for, what did we call it? Uh, or how should we grandma's call it? Ta well, we can take names. In our test, we called it grandma's tails. But you were, you know, Twitch chat, let us know what you want to call uh, grandma's Twitch chat region of the hood. Because we'll use it. We're, we're going off the cuff. We're doing it live, you know? <laughs> Grandma's uh, chat. For now, let's call that. Oh, by the way, it's worth to probably point out that if you want to have two lines or a bit of an edit, you can press on the S symbol right here, uh, and then you can shift enter to have two lines. I think we want two lines here. Pressing OK. Where is the text? There it is. And let's push it here to the corner. Let's reposition. I think it would be smart if it was center aligned. Elvis, you're you're <laughs> laughing. What, Yo, what came in? Because Twitch chat is popping off. I'm just gonna say we got some, we got uh, requests for hollow grandma. So that would be the title, and then we would like I don't know if there's like a hologram Dude, filter should, or like wireframe. So like see through. Uh, yeah, I'm on it. I'm on it. Uh, first of all, correct name. Uh, Hala. Oh, oh. Grandma? I like it. 
yeah so hologramma uh let's do it with two lines and yeah we we can totally make her uh, a little bit see-through so we have this imported 3d scene let's see let's find her grandma and grandpa dance and twerk and as you see if you double click on the imported uh, fbx model that that is true to all models mm. imported uh, if there's textures attached as it was here you can actually pick out the textures that you want to bring in as a texture map. So in this case, I just want to grab one, which is uh, diffuse. So I bring that in. And this is how the texture for the grandma looks. Now, the reason why I brought it in, because now I want to take a material. And I want to overwrite the material settings. As you see, there's quite a few inputs for the materials. We don't really care at this moment about the mouth, eyes, and uh, brows. It's it's literally just the uh, separate mm. extra things. We can address that later. This is the main one. And I'm going to apply that texture as an external one here to the material. In fact, just to prove the point, the things are fast and fun here. I'm going to cue it. So basically, any texture you bring in like this, you can actually live edit. For instance, maybe we want to have her like this or like that. And in the material, we have different interpretations of how should it be rendered on screen. So the default is alpha mode opaque. And if we choose uh, alpha blended, and uh, if we make sure that it's environmentally mapped or <laughs> or it's responding with the environment mapping, mm. now we set it to additive, and she's 100% see through. Yeah. So That's awesome. this is our Hala grandma. And uh, to further further prove the point of uh, using render layer. This is exactly where it comes handy. So render layer. Let's put the grandma under the render layer. And now we can apply some specific post effects. Well, first of all, she should be even more see through. So let's, uh, I think holograms glowed, don't they? Yeah, and they got that like VHS -y vibe to them. Mm -hmm, good point. Let's set her to the additive. VHS, you say, we have different options here. So that's one. Oh, she should be like twitching as well. Oh, Actually, a little bit of glitch, yeah, a little bit there of glitch. Is, there is, absolutely. There we go, closer still. Yeah. Uh, how about like proper glitch, motion data mosh, hands down my favorite one. Oh yeah, you know, the bandwidth is not enough, you know? There's, uh... Yeah, she's cracking she's up. Cracking she's cracking up. up. The bandwidth is not enough. So we have our holo grandma ready. Yeah. Uh, I'm not happy with the fact that we don't see uh, her name well. So I'm going to come back to the text node. I'm going to make sure that it's emissive. In fact, it should have a color as well. We're going to give this to Elbers. We're going to expose this parameter mm -hmm. so Elbers changes not only the text, but the color too. And as I recall, we had a glow system for all our arcade names. Let's double check. Uh, there we go. There's the name. There's the glow. I'm going to pipe in that grandma text to the glow as well. So it glows to. Um, done. Let's double check. Oh, yeah. Yep. Look at that. Maybe a little bit too strong. Let's just reduce the. Oh, it turned. Let's turn it back. So this spaghetti is our grandma. And grandma has her own camera. Obviously, uh, node graph uh, tidiness is an important thing. And that's something I always address in the very end of my productions. We even have region nodes to sort of point out mm. where things are. And you can leave comments. There's a, a node called comment. And you can actually write a message to your colleague. OK, hey, mate. Treat is grandma good. So now you know, Elbrus, when you're going to open this, that you need to treat her well. You always get to treat grandma well, you know. There's no, <laughs> there's no questions here about the treatment of grandma. Yeah, you, have to res you have to always respect grandma. So why did, why did we go through the whole effort of adding this grandma, adding this camera? Well, uh, basically, we want to have a switch. And the switch will come in the form of uh, select child. So select child does exactly what the name states. Basically, it gives you an index of an operator that should be rendered on screen. Mm. So I'm going to connect it to the root. And I'm going to bring back the camera that we had before. So this one right here. So instead of connecting it to the root via the null as we had before, I'm going to connect it to the select child node. 
And I'm going to do exactly the same thing with this render layer and with this camera. So basically all of these things right here will be activated only if select child node says to be activated. So I'm bringing it a little bit higher up there and there. Mm. So by default, the index is set to zero, but if we set it to one, all of a sudden we are rendering as this specific thing. Actually, we can bring back the crown, which can be on a main pass. We can always see her. Why not? So now we have a switch for different scenes, one and the other. Let's add one more scene, the chat scene I propose. And that's going to be one more camera to this rig. Does that make sense so far, like select child thing? Yeah, because in this case, you're essentially just like switching between the cameras that are controlling the render. And I think this mm -hmm. is select, so select child is one of the new nodes for virtual production, because you know being able to switch what's on the front plate, what's on the back plate, all that kind of workflow. Oh, so, so so that one was uh, was there for a while, but there's a specific select render layer mm. child. So there's a new one, very similar to this one, specifically for uh, virtual productions, as uh, Elbrus is saying. Mm. But this one, this one right there was for a while. So now we have a selection of three positions. So number one is the three arcades. Number two is our grandma, or in this case, the index is counting zero as our arcades. Number one as the grandma's corner or hologramma. And two is somewhere where me and Elbers will be hanging out in the live stream. So I think we need another envelope here, and we're going to pull both of the controls to the side. So first of all, I'm going to zero this out because I don't want any values there. I want to control those values with this envelope modifier. So there we go. I'm switching through. Uh, I could manually type in two here, but I think straight away I'm going to limit this value. So I can set the max and min. So I'm going to set it from zero to two. Now I know that I have these three spots, these three operators. So Right? So I'm pulling both of the controls a little bit to the side. Yes. We've got a question, which I, you could answer after you finish this. Uh, but Aristotle is asking, would it make sense to use the same switch to disable assets when they are not in view? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for that for that end, I would use uh, one extra node, which is called execute child. So if you want things not to render on screen on your command, use uh, ex uh, execute child nodes for that. Sounds horrible. The name is a little bit is gruesome, it, but it's a bit of an aggressive name, but you know, it, 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 it is what it is. It explains the thing, you know. I think we shouldn't execute the children. We should execute monsters. Yeah. So we're going to make sure that the monster that we have here is actually under the execute child uh, property. So let's just find him in the node graph, whatever we dropped off this fella. Let's see. Where are you, tiny devil? There you are. So this is our monster. And I'm going to make sure that the monster is beneath the execute child node, or basically connected to it. Mm -hmm. So now I have a choice. Should it be rendered on screen or not Great. as a switch? And if it's switched off, it's not eating GPU at all. So basically, it is prevented from any resource draining. Yeah. So to uh, Arist Aristotle's question, it was Aristotle. Yeah. I think I know Aristotle. I think we met. Uh, this is a good way to make sure that you're preventing the leak of resources. Mm. And this is a good management of things on and off screen. Uh, obviously, you might want to employ the render layer too somewhere in that chain. The, those two nodes would work together depending on what you're building. Uh, we're probably going to come back to this execute child because it's going to be needed for the game over sequence. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to rig it. I'm just going to show you guys how it's built. This this technique right here is actually used in a rig already. I just wanted to make a little simple sample. And would you recommend so to folks have that are building their projects, you know, as like one of those optimization steps to go through and set a lot of stuff to turn on and off? Or is it is that a, is turning it on and off a taxing process? Like, does it unload and reload to GPU? It's so basically, if it's not on screen, it's being called anyways. It's not being rendered, mm. obviously. Uh, at some points, it's probably handy if you have a huge system. I'm going to think as a screen producer for music show. Mm. So if there's a whole song that you need to have in one node draft, verse, chorus, you might as well set the verse under one execute child and the chorus under the other. So basically, you split things up. Uh, usually, it's not really needed, but sometimes you have these specific moments where you need to stop the drain of the 
resources. So then, then I would use that. Did I answer the question? I think so. Yeah. The, the idea is that, yeah, you can use this freely. Um, and we do have a quick other question for you, which is, does Notch integrate with Unity or Unreal? Um, I think not yet, right? I'm thinking how to be the politically correct uh, here. Not yet is a yeah. perfect answer. There you not have yet. it. Uh, there you have it. Uh, yeah, not yet. Let's leave it at that. These are great tools. Uh, I mean, I love Unity and I love Unreal, uh, but they're more gaming uh, game oriented. Mm -hmm. So they sort of facilitate different customer. But I think we started to overlap in offerings in the last uh, year or so when there was more interest in virtual productions. So of course, it would be interesting to have that integration. But I cannot vouch if there's anything being done just yet. Mm -hmm. If there's going to be something, I am sure there will be official comms coming out very, very, uh, yeah, it's going to be coming out if it happens. And you'll see it on interactiveimmersive.io uh, your one-stop shop for all things interactive immersive you know what i'm saying just a little sh a quick little shill shill moment in there uh so also i'll give you uh, just a quick note um we're at 115 so we're 45 minutes left if you want to prioritize and we can go over a little bit it's not not the end of the world but if you want to start yeah, like prioritizing I mentally think... where we're going to take it so uh it was with the dead set plan to be super serious and hammer things through, but I think we ended up just having a little bit more fun than I anticipated. So I'm just going to go with the flow. And uh, as I started now to build a couple of things and then explain a couple of things, I'm just going to carry on doing that. So I am back now to this two hours later. I love that. That's a good one. And I'm just going to show you. <laughs> and I'm going to show you the controls rigged through. So obviously, the no graph is much more tidy. So here we have chat box which is our grandma's tales or the hologramma grandma. Uh, and uh, here we have, uh, let's see. Oh, in the same place, we have the chat corner as well. So basically, we have things a bit more tidy. Mm. And we have the control. So these are the two controls that we built together. So camera arcade. Oh, I locked myself out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Dun, dun, dun. Back. Sorry. Dun wrong button uh so here we have that uh, switcher for the cameras of three different setups i did took an effort to put elbers and myself there oh hold on so a sec hold on a sec uh, um, uh, i don't <laughs> see you moving anymore ah uh, here I'll, I'll i'll take you off screen for a second if you want to hey, look at us now now oh yeah now i we're, see what happened big and there pretty. we go i should be moving now yeah let me switch back uh yep move the mouse a little bit Oh, yeah, yeah, you're good. I am you're moving live. the mouse. We're I'm good. moving the scene. We're, we're perfect. We're golden. So, so we have the first switch of uh, three camera positions via the select child, which is here. Uh, and then we have a arcade pan, which we discussed. And that's minus one, one, and zero. Just have to be in an active camera. One thing we didn't talk about is the win and lose sequences. And those two have uh, envelopes to enable them. So let's say, let's enable the win. This is hilarious. This made me laugh so hard. <laughs> yeah, so we have a grandma dancing whenever you win. And let me explain you how the grandma is rigged, uh, grandpa is rigged. It's actually set with the execute child node. So anytime you... Uh, select to enable the win it literally just sets uh, one property on execute child and anything connected to the execute child is enabled mm. so in this case things that are enabled is four lights with a matte modifier so they're dimming all around maybe it's not that visible but it's there as you see now there's four lights blinking mm. they're all under the null because i wanted a little bit of a control of going them up uh, bringing them up and down if we want to make the bit more advanced animation and then there's a render layer and i'm using render layer because i wanted extra glow with the particle system so there's a little ring of uh, particles using primitive emitter spawning these points going all around this uh, fella this grandpa dancing and as mentioned this is all set up with the trigger with the envelope modifier using execute child uh, aside of that, there's a little extra rig here, which is using select child nodes to switch cameras. So there's two cameras that are dynamically switching. So when you enable the envelope modifier to enable this old rig, not only it sends signal here, it sends signal to the camera switch, the select child one as well. And it chooses the property three. And the property three is all of this rig. 
So if I'm building a camera switch, not only I can connect cameras directly to the select child node, I can connect another select child node to have sub cameras in it. Does that make sense? Should I, should I make a simple example of this? Yeah. Yep, yep. Yep, yep, making a new layer. So let's just talk about execute child as a, as a thing or select child. So here we have a select child node. Let's give it a... I just realized, sorry, I was also muted so Armin could hear me, but chat couldn't hear me. Where I, I was just, I was saying, yes, an example would be great because uh, there was a lot of sub, sub, subception going on. Was, I'm back now, don't worry. I, I just muted because I was typing to ask. Because folks, if you got questions, hey, don't be a stranger. This is a, a loving, open place. Ask whatever you want. Whatever your heart desires, put in the chat. We got you covered. Exactly. So this is a simple trick for the select child node. Basically, we have a node that is setting up an index. Instead of the shape 3Ds, it could easily be cameras. Mm. So imagine if these are cameras. So under that, we can set another select child, for instance. And mind you, this is corresponding with the stacking order. That's very important in Notch. So if oh, Notch yeah. is thinking about what should be rendered first, it's always from top to bottom or from left to right. So be mindful when you're building your node graphs. Is the one or the other choice? So now we have fourth operator, which is select child node. And here, I'm going to set a shape 3D. First of all, I'm going to make sure that it's rendering on screen. And I'm going to make it into a box. I'm going to make a copy of this box, set it beneath. And this box will go beneath here. So now we have a switch here, which is separate. Mm. So for the sake of example, I'm going to use math modifier. So you guys in touch, you are familiar with these kind of things. This is literally it's like an LFO. oscillation yeah. between two values. Mm, exactly. Well, let's see, maybe we just give it a bigger, uh, or let's just set it to, to square. So it's just turning on and off. We don't need those busy curves. We just need on and off. So now we have this operator, which is doing its own operation of switching through as a child of this select child node. So if I turn it off, I can now choose whichever the one is being rendered. Mm. Does that make sense? So this, these are all our cameras. So this is camera one, two, three, the pan of the arcade, the grandma's corner, the chat thing. And then the fourth thing, this thing right here is the winning streak with two cameras inside of it animated. And they're animated with the very same math modifier. So it just goes up and down mm. or left and right. So this is the simple version of what you've seen right here in the control panel or in the control layer. OK, yeah. So, so then to cool. break this uh, down, so essentially, first you use one of your select childs to get to the, you know, like the grandpa view. Then inside the grandpa view, you have another select child that's doing the switching of cameras. Uh, yeah, kind at of. At a high level, at a very high so, level. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just building a system that allows me to pull one switch or give control of one switch for you. You wouldn't have to think about 25 different mm -hmm. things. You pull that one things are happening. In the very same manner, I'm going to set this back to zero. In the very same manner, there is a game over setup. Uh, so if I release this, you will see that the animation is playing back. And then there's a black screen. And then there's a restart. Mm. So I'm not going to go into details on how it's rigged, but this principle is the same. So we have execute child node, which is being triggered by that slider. And then there's a couple of uh, condition modifiers saying like, if you finish playing back this, then kill yourself or <laughs> kill yourself, uh, execute yourself or yeah. stop uh, stop rendering. Um, and we're using time stretch and we're using time stretch because we want to control the animations of the imported 3D model. That's maybe another nice thing to mention about uh, Mixama models. If you want to control, if you more if you want more overall control of their speed. So for instance, let's get back to our best friend. Uh, Monster. I'm going to enable the monster. And as you see, it has uh, animations. We can speed it down or slow it up. But we can use something like uh, time stretch. So if we use time stretch, here too, we can 
further decrease or uh, increase speed. I'll just press Control Z. But we can choose to go for the absolute time. And what absolute time does? It uh, it allows us to choose sh how should it be rendered. So basically, you have a you have a slider for time. For some reason, I cannot get it to run now. I guess I did something wrong. But basically, this time stretch. Doot, 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 where we are it is controlling the playback speed of this fellow right here. So I can probably show it here easier. Just unhook it. Oh damn, this is like one of those horrible moments where I cannot show things. Um, something got a bit stuck. Do you also mind yep. doing a quick alt tab or alt tab back? Because uh, we got a lot of like those, uh, what do you call it? You know, like the bandwidth artifacts. There's like all crazy colors mm -hmm. and stuff on screen. Hold on, let me see if I can switch it here real quick. Here, you're not on screen. Can you minimize notch and like bring it back up? Let's see if that does the trick. Yep, can do. Are we back on? Uh, now I'm putting you back on. Oh, Although weird, I see, mm -hmm. I see it here, but I don't see it in OBS Ninja. Okay, hopefully that, uh, I'll try and work on that in the background. You keep going. Don't let me slow you down. Okay, cool. So uh, <laughs> we have uh, four controls. Uh, they're all here. Available for us as a sliders. And I think the next thing to talk about is uh, exposing things. So we want Elbers to be able to control uh, quite a few parameters in uh, this rig. Obvious parameters that we want to give him is the very controls we build. So basically the camera switches and the camera pans, the winning and losing sequences. All that is necessary to expose those for his control in Touch Designer is going for the node and uh, going for the envelope modifier in this case, the one that controls the switch and exposing the value with the question mark next to the value property. So here we can set the minimum and maximum value. So in this case, it's already set zero and two. And all we have to do is click expose and we can have a unique name for it. So it's already assigned by the name of the node, but we can give uh, a name of our own. So I can call this perhaps uh, scene switch, scene camera switch. There we go. As soon as I hit OK or enter, it's already in exposed camera list, in exposed parameter list. It's a third tab right here. Let's do the same with the arcade pan. So I'm going to hit the question mark. Again, I already set the minimum and maximum value here. So I'm going to expose it and I'm going to call it uh, arcade switch. OK, so this property right here is as well exposed for uh, Elbrus is use. And then we have the same thing happening with the win and lose. So all we have to do is expose, give it the name. I'm going to keep it as a win. Same thing with the game over. And as I'm adding these things, they're appearing here in the list. So these old things, Elbrus will be able to plug in in Touch Designer with different values, different things that he's using mm. to trigger animations and, and set up the, the trigger points. There's a couple of extra things that we should expose. We spoke that uh, it would be nice, or we had this idea of switching through color dynamically, depending on what uh, situation is with the count of the votes for different arcades. So the color property as well can be exposed. So we're just going to make sure to expose it. So LED bar color, bam, that comes in as well. Let's see what else is handy. Well, obviously, we need inputs for the textures. So for all of these arcades, so one, two, three. So these are all here. This is the one, this is two, this is three. So just like mentioned in the beginning of the stream, all you have to do is just click on Expose. That's it. Now Elbrus are, is able to take it over whenever he loads the block. I, expose, I really expose, love how crazy expose. easy this part of the process is. Like, it really blows my mind that you said this really like complicated thing. You just go through hitting like, okay, open this up, open this up, open this up, open this up. And then we just hop into touch and they all just appear for me to control. Yeah, same with the text node. So for instance, we have all of these arcade names. So let's give it an exposure here. So arcade three, arcade two, 
arcade one. So basically now in touch, uh, Elbrus will be able to dynamically change the text to his liking as well. Um, I would presume we want to do the same exposing of the inputs here for the grandma's corner too. And that's and her screen is here. So let's do that too. Let's expose. Uh, we could probably open the text. So I'm just going to select the text. There's the text. Let's expose that too. There we go. Elbrus now is in control of all these things. And I think it would be cool if Friday, you can see me. Oh yeah, we're gonna Elbrus we're gonna pipe movies. us we're gonna pipe us right into there. I got the whole NDI set up on this side too. I'll explain all that stuff, but yeah, we're definitely gonna also we'll be live <laughs> on screen on the Twitch and virtually live inside the old chat corner. So obviously we want to have this as an exposed property to on both of the little circle here. So exposing, exposing. And one thing I want to expose as well, because this is kind of hard to anticipate uh, how the camera will look. So I've added a transform image mm. node here. Yes. What transform Type. image node does, uh, off, when you render it on screen, it looks a little bit awkward, but basically allows you to reposition or rescale or re-rotate the texture. So this really helps if you want to work with the dynamic scaling or dynamic positioning. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to expose that. So let's say the position X. Can I just say our headshots look fab, by the way? Like we just got some, we got some fab headshots. I'm no Mr. T, but uh, damn, man, we look good. We look good, bro. We look good. So that's exposed as well. There we go. Um, likely throughout the week, while Elbers is working on the touch part, I'm going to make some tweaks here too and add some, dare I say it, Easter eggs. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. manages good. to find them Friday. This is gonna be some funny, uh, funny shenanigans. Uh, oh, we didn't expose the text here, so let's do that too. So let's come back to this rig. Text question mark expose yes. So we have a whole list now of exposed things. Some of these naming conventions make sense. Some of them are a little bit more abstract. So let me just quickly mention that uh, you can actually reposition and rename them in this panel. If oh you find no yourself way. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. This is super handy. So if you find yourself delivering a project to someone else, uh, I think Truchette name will make very little sense for Elber. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to rename it to LED bars. Oh, that's handy. And now we have LED bars. And the control that we had under the Truchette is refacilitated under this mm -hmm. name. So I can just delete the old one. We don't need it anymore. Obviously, for Friday, I'm going to make it all uh, coherent, let's put it this mm -hmm. way. And uh, I presume it was a little bit hard to follow because we're all over the place because we're taking questions and switching back and forward and trying thing and another. Uh, I'm just going to point out that this file will be available as a download. And uh, yeah, I'm probably I'm going to make a little extra video more coherently explaining different little rigs for Friday mm -hmm. too. So we have that as a download next to the actual uh, DFX file. I think it will help a lot. Yeah, and those will be available oh, this... along with the touch file. We'll get it all ready for you guys for Friday. So that way, you know, and, and we've been saying like our remote setup here is, is a bit crazy. So I know some of the texts are a little bit hard to read, but as long as you're hanging in there, you know, seeing the concepts that Armin is talking about, how he's setting stuff up, uh, you know, some of the new features inside a notch, like you'll be more than comfortable to then hop into that project, be like, okay, cool. I get how this is working. If I want to tweak stuff or if I want to like take some stuff out of this, I know where stuff is. So don't worry too much 100% if, if you know, you're not one for one, you know, following along, you know, you'll get all these as references for, for after. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's going to be a bit more consecutive uh, breakdown there too. Because again, we spent quite a bit of time just going back and forward. I think it's going to help a lot. Um, so let's move on to our next uh, point. If we ha have all of these things uh, exposed, we should probably talk a little bit about making this run smooth in mm -hmm. Elbrus oh, Machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I, before you go into that, there's... I will say just two quick things. Yep. Three quick things. I lied. Three, but they're going to be three super quick things. One, optimization is like my favorite thing ever. I don't know why. I just I love optimization. Uh, two. You're one of the kind. I know. I know. I don't know why. It's like it's like a. <laughs> I feel like if I liked daytime soap operas, that would be the same kind of guilty pleasure. Um, two, we are approaching, we got about half an hour left, folks. So if you got questions about what we're working on, if you are new to Notch, 
you're trying to figure out like what what heads or tails or if there are some features we do have a, a mix and question i'll shoot you later armin um let us know in the chat yeah, sure. drop it in twitch chat drop it inside of the youtube chat i'm watching i'm here for you we'll get those answered uh, we've also got some of the fantastic notch team also up in the chat who are helping out folks but let us know because we are we are going to you know this is going to next half hour is going to fly by then we're going to start wrapping up and then we'll be back on wednesday at 12 p.m eastern we'll talk about that in a bit back to you armin thank you for letting me do my little announcements Absolutely happy to. So uh, yeah, let's talk a bit about optimization. Obviously, we took an effort to get to this point and how do we make sure that this actually runs on another machine that is perhaps a little bit less powerful than, well, the machine that you're working on. A little, actually, a a little is an understatement. Is it an understatement a little? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can actually go for a performance uh, checker. So we have a specific little tab that allows you to double check how this blog how this design would hold up against specific uh, graphics card or media server. So do you want to, what? Yeah, I, I, I think I've got a 970M. Is the 970M in there? 980M is in there? Put 980M, it's pretty close. 960, yeah, 980. Okay, 980. No, 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 980M, so hold on, wait, wait, the M. Screen. Don't forget, it's a laptop, the M. <laughs> Ooh, Take a couple thousand oh, okay. off the top, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's sort of all right, but probably could be better. It, it probably could be yeah. better. And for folks <laughs> that are new high. to this, we have a great YouTube video that talks a little bit about this uh, performance tool. Because what you can see here is on Armin's machine, it's running at 23 milliseconds GPU time, 21 milliseconds CPU time. But it's estimating that on my computer, it would be running at 117 milliseconds, which is like not great frame yeah, rate. So, so address, to address that, uh, this is something that we can double check for the general reference. And then we have another tab, which is called Profiler, which allows you to double check per node uh, energy or GPU or CPU consumption. So basically, I'm just going to enable that. And now I have a readout values of the GPU milliseconds and CPU milliseconds on the node. Now, if the node costs nothing to run, like for instance, these area lights cost absolutely nothing, hence it's very cheap. There is no text readout of the numeric values. So if Notch considers that uh, this node is expensive, it will give you readouts of the numerics as it does here on the lights. Obviously, these lights are not that expensive. Mm -hmm. What is expensive, for instance, is this screen space reflection. So we could drop it to even smaller number, like blur samples set to eight. We still have the reflections still there. Obviously, if we bump it up real high, it's going to be much smoother. But I think Elbers is not keen to have smooth reflections. He just needs a little bit of reflections there. So we can bump it down just a quite touch. a lot. Just a touch. All of a sudden, we're gaining, all of a sudden we're gaining uh, performance right there. So this is a GPU optimization. Obviously, we could push it a little bit more, but we can optimize CPU too. So what eats CPU in Notch is the number of nodes. Easiest way to reduce the number of nodes is to freeze the geometry that is not seen to be dynamic. For instance, all of these nodes right here, which is the whole floor that we have here, it, it doesn't have to be dynamic. There is no point for this to be uh, live. This all could be baked in or frozen, mm -hmm. uh, and we can just lock it in. So we can do exactly that. So I'm going to go for freeze geometry. I'm going to add that to the node graph, connect it to the root. I'm going to mark all of these nodes up, and I'm going to connect it as an input for the freeze geometry node. Mm. As you see, all of a sudden, they are all uh, disregarded now or checkered out with the snowflake icon and they're being rendered but they're being rendered as a solid piece so they are not dynamic anymore and that definitely affects the cpu now this is not a heavy scene in general mm -hmm. so maybe the gain in this specific scene is marginal but trust me if you have multiple objects let's say 150 objects of 3000 polys this right here will help you lots with gaining back that performance on CPU and even on GPU. So what's cool about freeze geometry, you can actually apply materials back on it. So freeze geometry takes all the UVs that was assigned to every single object and it distributes this as a grid in a, in a square. So let me showcase that by uh, baking in lighting in this one. So basically I can grab a make light to object node connected to the freeze geometry Let's say I can set it to 150 refines, add a post-filter light map. Let's just bake it in. 
think I'm happy with the default. And this is baking in. You see that I have all these textures, and all these textures have an assigned square for it. Mm. Now, I didn't put on any path tracer or something that is expensive or takes a little bit to render. I just wanted to showcase that you can actually bake in frozen geometry. So we could probably do that to all of these points. So we can take another freeze geometry. And freeze geometry is a new operator, right? That's one of the new ones that just came out. Yeah, that's exactly for the virtual productions. Yeah. So basically, this answer is the, the need. Or actually, we shouldn't freeze the screens. These can stay dynamic. We're going to use those. Yeah, this is a new node that allows you to, well, save resources, basically. So we could do that to all of these setups. As you see, there's quite a few. So there's the arcs, there's the walls. All of that can be frozen in. Uh, what else can we do to make this a little bit faster? Well, we can cache in materials. Sometimes when you're building a material, you might as well build something super complex. Let me let me show an example of what I mean when I say super complex. I am that sure that I already did this on all of these uh, geometry pieces. So I'm making a small demo for this. So here I have a shape 3D. I'm going to make sure that it's emissive so we see it better on the screen. And let's say we have a generator responsible for color. And then let's say that we have, uh, or actually let's build something decent. We do have abundance of materials available in resources. Let's just make this bigger. Let's grab, let's say, concrete walls. As you see, there's a few textures. I'm going to bring them all in. So let's start with this one. This is the albedo channel. So we're going to pipe it to the color. So there it is. This one right here is ambient occlusion. And that's our ambient occlusion input here. So in the very end, great. This is normals. So let's pipe in the normals. I'm going to make sure that the normals are respected. There, normals tangent space. Too quick on a trigger. Need to switch to, there we go, tangent space. And let's make sure that it's respecting the environment map too. There we are. Let's perhaps give it a little bit more specularity so you guys see that it's actually working. Oh, there yeah, we look go. at that. That looks nice. And then we have roughness. So for roughness, we have uh, an input here. So I'm going to pipe that in. And obviously, now we have control over roughness via slider, so we can tweak it to our liking. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm just proving a point here. Uh, and then we have the last one. I actually imported roughness twice, didn't I? So we can just delete this. So we have this texture. It's set up, and it's using a lot of external inputs. Why did I choose to use external inputs? Well, perhaps I want to make uh, some color corrections, or I want to tweak them out. And I can do that by just applying different post effects, so on and so forth. Mm. But at some point, I probably am happy with the look of the texture. And if that texture doesn't have to animate, instead of leaving all these nodes hanging, I can go for the material, right click, material options, cache material. And now notice what happens when I cache it in. All of these nodes are unhooked, oh, and wow. they're not necessary anymore. All the properties are stored now inside of this specific Whoa. code. So this helps This helps a lot. Uh, again, one thing to remember, this is not a dynamic texture anymore. This is a solid piece. Mm. You set it up, you're happy. This is running as it is. So this is a very, very nice tool. I think I did it to all of these textures minus uh, these walls that have uh, animated through mm. shed and minus the video inputs here. All the rest is actually baked in to the very node. So you don't have to uh, have excessive number of nodes all around it or excessive uh, use of processing if you don't need it. Yeah, and that, that sounds huge. Like, I know we just went through those three things like really quickly, but those are like huge optimizations that are so much easier. Like take all your geometry and freeze them, bake down whatever lighting isn't dynamic. And then that caching of materials, like those are three pretty heavy things to then just like, couple clicks down. Yeah, to that point, uh, I think it's it's a very mixed environment of people who came to this stream. So it's it's impossible to cater mm. to a person who 
already knows and who doesn't know anything. So I'm just a little bit all over the place. Uh, if you are interested to learn specifics about these optimization points, uh, to visit Notch VFX YouTube channel, there are specific tutorials about every single point I mentioned here. So it's showcasing how to use things properly. And of course, there's a manual and there's a forum. Uh, there's a lot of good information there. So I would strongly encourage to check these things. If you never used Notch before, and this all is a bit foreign, but hopefully interesting to a point where you're willing to sit down and check it out proper, uh, I would say go to notch.one. We have a learn button and there we have links to e-learning schools. So basically essential course is completely free of charge. Go ahead, check it out. Hopefully you'll find something interesting there. It talks about all the major properties of Notch. How do you get around? So everything from UI to lighting, to materials, to rendering a video, to expo exporting things to media servers. And once you're satisfied with that, and you have your grips, you can go for intermediate course, which talks about different group sets of dynamic uh, tools in Notch. So anything from deformers to cloners to particle systems to voxel simulations via fields, so on and so forth. So I would strongly recommend checking out those learning resources if you're actually keen on trying things out. We have Facebook user group where quite a few of us Notch internal team members hang out and interact with uh, users. Definitely join that. It's a great community of awesome designers. There's quite a few actually sharing their knowledge and their files. Uh, I think it's a great place for you to find some information and to find some new friends, hopefully, or customers or employees, dare I say. Or, or so it's very much a good environment there. Friendstimers, you know, they're like friends that are customers, the Friendstimers. Friendstimers. I'm all about friends it. Friendstimers. Exactly. Uh, so let's say that this is optimized to a point where we are kind of happy. And now it's time to give it away to Elbers. So Armin, quick question for you. Give away... Yes. We shoot. have a question in the chat, which I think is, <gasps> uh, can you undo the material cache operation? No, this one, this one point is actually destructive. So if you are a little bit worried that you're making a mistake of caching things in, I would always recommend copying the node with all these links, mm. setting it aside, uh, pressing Control-1, because Control-1 is a command that disables rendering, just leaving it on the side for a while and then caching in. So you have that reference to come back to if things go bad. Uh, the caching in, baking in, all of these operations are done when you are completely happy with your project. This is not something you should be doing in the midst of the project. This is optimization. So it's usually the last step of the process. So baking lights, uh, freezing geometry is dynamic. You can change it at any time you want, but uh, caching in materials is destructive. So have a backup for that one point. All the other points are dynamic. This one point is, is solid. Likely it's going to be more advancements in that in the future, but for now it's something you already made the decision, you committed, you're good to go. So always leave it to the very end of the project. If you are not sure that this is the final look of the material, make a little extra copy of it. Mm. Does that make sense? Perfect. Thank you. Right. So sure thing. Uh, we are set and happy with this design. Let's just recap a little bit. We have a ton of geometry, which was given for us as a start point by a notch template, which can be found in the sample page. So VPTV stage gray box. We applied some creative textures here and there. We added some controls. So basically, we wanted to control the color, let's say, of the LED strips. We wanted to control the inputs of the video screens here. We added some controls to camera pans. We optimized this. And now we are ready to export this for Elbers. So what we're going to do, we're going to go for project, compile, block for media server. And that's pretty much all that is needed to get this file ready for Elbers to overtake. So I'm going to call this test one. Save. Oh, in fact, there's one handy thing that we can do before we export this. We have a ton of layers here. I don't think Elbers has a reason to use any of those uh, aside of the one that I'm actually using now. Mm. So I'm going to go ahead and file, save, save a layer. So you can choose to save separate layers. So you would make files out of all of these layers oh, as wow. a separate units. Or you can choose to just save one layer, this specific layer. So I'm going to save the layer. And I will call this. And that Elbers saves them into separate projects. Takeover. Yeah, if you choose mm. save separate layers, that does. Uh, if you choose just to save this one layer, it will make 
separate file for just this That's awesome. layer. So I'm calling this Albert's decoder. I'll give it a moment. And let's just wait for it to compile. In a very same fashion, since you can split them up, you can bring them back together. Mm. So under file, there's merge layers property. So once you click on that, you are prompted with a selection of should you want to merge not only the two DFX files, but their resources mm. and scenes with the similar names. That's another optimization, basically, if you have wow, several that's pretty things cool. that are being repetitive. We're going to check that out. I'll, ha I'll have to give it a moment to uh, gather resources and get the DFX ready, because it's rather big uh, yeah. file. So just give it a moment. We have a question in the meantime. Um, Mm -hmm. We've got someone asking, is it possible to make some of the text bigger in the notch UI? Uh, just in case, you know, like reading small text is not your like strong suit. I suggest um, that, especially when it comes think... to doing something like connecting, when you're connecting the material, the video loaders to the materials, you know, when you're hovering over the inputs, uh, someone was mentioning, oh, you know, it can be a little bit hard to read. And I was saying, well, for some of the nodes or most of the nodes, you could just double click it and you get it on a list view. But I guess there's no um, UI scaling. Or I guess, could you, could you do Windows? If you did Windows display scaling, it would get bigger? Yeah. I think at the current, current moment, the only way to do that is Windows scaling. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, upcoming releases that we're going to be putting out is going to be all focused on the UI and UX. So there's going to be some new exciting things when it comes to these kind of uh, uh, situations where you might want to have things a little bit bigger, smaller, you name it. So mm. I, I would strongly think that there will be some advancements there. Um, for now, that's the option. A uh, good practice that I found is leaving comments. So I comments are dynamic in scale. So notice that if I bring in a comment, I can just type in the text, for instance, hello, this right here has several options. So when I'm going to be prepping this for the actual handover to Elbers, I'm going to leave a lot of comments all around. So not only I'm going to deliver him the block, but I'm going to deliver him the DFX file too. So should he come into an issue, he doesn't know how one or the other thing works, so he wants to double check, he can get into my block or to my DFX file, and he can see comments stating where things are. That's why these things are marked up with different colors. For instance, he now knows that this is a winning sequence. This is the control panel. These are the people, so basically all these models that we imported. Alongside those things, I'm going to make a little note saying, hey, uh, Elvis, if you struggle with performance, disable this. Or if you need to boost up the lighting, this is where you should do that. And I would do that all with the comment note. In fact, you guys will have a chance to get that very file Friday as well with all the comments and all the regions and all the explanations inside of it. So. Uh, I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to grab the file that we exported, which is Elber's takeover. I think I'm safe to close this off. So I'm not going to save it because it's going to take too much time. So mm. I'm going to just close it off and I'm going to open the Elber's takeover, the one layer that we exported as a separate path. So let's just give it a moment to load up. And this one right here, we can definitely export as a block from media server. And, uh, we're going to double check the FX player. Basically, we want to be sure that it's actually running before we send it to Elbers. I, I for one, don't really have a, let's say I don't have a touch designer's license or I'm giving it into a media server that I never worked with. Uh, the easy way for me to double check that it's actually fulfilling the task that it should is to run it via FX player. So we're going to do exactly that as soon as this loads up. And then I'll say, so after this is happening, is there any other question? That's a per you, you just took the Sorry? words right out of my mouth. I was going to say, <laughs> you know, this is the perfect opportunity <laughs> to get your, your last questions in. Because, you know, we, we got about 10 minutes left. You know, I think, Armin, you're probably going to show off the, the, D, the VFX loader. And then kind of from there, we're kind of in that wrap-up zone where we've gone through. We've made, like, this really amazing yep. content in Notch that, you know, and folks can see. You know, we didn't build everything, like, live immediately. But they can see how quick it was to put this together. Uh, so our story checks out that we did no. this basically all just last week. <laughs> uh, no, I think we didn't make justice for people who were expecting this to be consecutive uh, how-to. But then mm. again, this is not something you can do in two hours. Regardless how fast the workflow is, you're still going to need a little bit more than two hours to get from template state to a fully delivered project. However, for the people who were for the people who were expecting this, we will have fallback file, fallback explanation. For people who were just interesting to see things around, I hope we made justice just showing things off and giving some cool names to some mm -hmm. cool video inputs. 
I actually really enjoyed some of them. I think after we are done with the stream, me and Elbers will take notes of the suggestions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these will be translated and available in a Wednesday stream. 100%. There we are. So our scene is now loaded in. So we can go for the project compiled block for media server. And here we can give it a file name. So let's say Elber Stake or we can just keep that. I it's like okay. it. I, listen, not to be a narcissist, but I love it when I hear my name. Do you know what I'm talking about? If folks in the chat, if you love hearing your name, give me a F in the chat for loving that, you know? <laughs> oh, yo, my buddy Leo's there. How's it going, my friend? Welcome. We got some Fs in the chat for loving saying okay. their own names. Just saying. <laughs> so while this, while this is compiling, I'm just going to mention that uh, now we're making a copy of Notch Engine and the design that we built. So basically, the performance that we were getting in uh, Notch Builder does not correspond with the performance that we're going to get in the block. The block actually will run faster because uh, Notch does not have to take into account any UI elements. Basically, you gain... I'd say up to 15%, especially if you export it for the executable, because, well, there is no overhead required as a, as a threshold, as a save margin for any other operations that you might add. This is considered to be locked and loaded. This is all that it is, engine and a design. Mm. So uh, this is another thing to consider when you're preparing things. So if you see that you are one frame lacking in the builder or two frame source, split of a millisecond, that's fine. Likely you're going gain to gain it back once it's exported. Yeah. However, keep in mind that you're exporting it for media server and media server likely has tasks of its own that needs to uh, address. <laughs> that's an so understatement, that yeah. A... Like, <laughs> understatement the amount of tasks <laughs> we're going to do on Wednesday. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually very excited to see the touch designer side of this and the, all the crazy that Elbers built because he was quite fast in delivering some really, really insane things. Ah, by the way, while this is, comp oh, there we go. Uh, since I wanted to mention this, I will mention this. Uh, you see, there's this graffiti texture. Mm -hmm. We brought it in. We can actually read out its properties. It's 5,000 by 5,000 and it weighs 95 megabytes. Mm. And it's a JPEG. So actually, if I was a smart guy, when I'm delivering this to Elbers, I likely will try to be when I'm re-exporting this tomorrow, I will shrink these textures down to a, a DDS format. So if you click on the texture that you brought in, if you right-click on a texture, you will see that the last property is compressions. Mm -hmm. So notice what happens if we compress it to the DXT5. So let's just give it a moment. So from, well, how much was that? 95 yeah, 95 megabytes? down we to 23. Down to, we didn't lose any quality whatsoever when it comes to on-screen presence. So basically, this is another way to reduce the file size, another way to optimize a little bit for another step in your project. I always convert everything to DDSs. However, I would never do that to HDRI images. That's just a bad idea. Yeah. So textures, yes, HDRIs, you shouldn't. Right, so let's navigate to Windows, Program Files, uh, Notch. And here we have the FX player host DirectX 1164 executable. Let's give it a small scale now, 1280 on 720, and let's load in this block. And let's give a moment for it to load up. So this is the very tool that we mentioned with Elbers in the beginning of the stream. This is a great emulator to double check the performance and to double check if everything is all right with your block the way you anticipate it. So let's just give it a moment to load up. And to your point, like, and, and this is what I was saying in the YouTube video that we put up about this, which probably I think is going up today, later in the afternoon. You know, it is it is really common that you're maybe a content creator or you're, even if you're the developer, like, you probably don't have the D3 server sitting next to you all the time. You know, your touch designer pro licenses are probably somewhere in the office. Maybe you don't even have the touch designer commercial because you're just really the, the content creator. And I think this is really amazing just being able to, do a quick, you know, fact check. Did I expose everything correctly? Does me, ex you know, playing with the exposed sliders do the things that I think it's going to do? Uh, I think that this is like a super cool. And you know, how does it affect resolution? How does it affect performance? Like all these kind of things that you can just do without needing to worry about. Oh, like, do I have the license for the other thing as well? Mm, so obviously, you can dynamically change the resolution, and you will have the readout of milliseconds and frame mm. rates 
in FX player. Now I'm not getting big numbers here because I'm running builder still and I'm running the FX player. So for the actual proper readout, I would just kill off or close off the builder and I would just focus on this. Mm -hmm. I would set in the correct resolution of whatever you anticipate the correct resolution should be. And then you have a good, decent understanding of how much exactly does it cost to run Notch on top of whatever you have as a cost. I think you call it cooking. Yeah. On whatever it's cooking in, uh, in touch we're designer. Chefs. We're chefs in touch designer, I'm just saying. Chefs in the kitchen. Ah. You know, the chefs in the kitchen. Can I, I'm gonna, while you're doing that, I'm going to draw a chef hat on my whiteboard because I got a whiteboard and I've literally never used it. Yeah, yeah, you actually haven't had a chance to take a full advantage of that. We should have a name for that too. So I think that there's a smarter way to call Touch Designer Chef. That could be a better name. To be honest, I don't even know where the mark. Remember, we, it was before we went live. Remember the big clang sound you heard? Oh, no. That was, was that me the dropping oh. the marker, and I have no idea. So I can't even, like, <laughs> the one time I was going to use the whiteboard. <laughs> such, such is yeah. life. Well, We'll we'll have it ready for Wednesday. Can you promise? I'll that promise. We'll have it I ready promise. For I'm th th I'm not messing around. This is a whiteboard. Brilliant. So we have a properties panel here that allows us to set in se a specific uh, scale. We can double check the frame rates, and here we have a whole panel of things that are exposed. So I can actually double check that everything is there. Now, in the case of FX Player, the open ports for video textures comes in as a hue rotation, just so mm. you know that it's exposed and it's there. Uh, in other media servers, it might look a bit different. So I think Helbers will be able to present to us what's up in uh, Touch Designer Wednesday. And yeah, there we go. All of the parameters that we exposed are here for us, uh, available to double check, to navigate, to change. All here for um, whatever the reasons you want, for whatever the time yeah. you need to make sure. And I, I would say, that, like this, I think some people are going to look at this and be like, oh, okay, sure, cool. As a professional, there is nothing worse than the egg on your face when you send something and they load and they take the time to load it up and they map a bunch of parameters and they're like, oh, hey, you forgot to like expose the one other thing. And like you can avoid so many of those just with this little tool right here. You pop it open. It, does all the stuff show up? I think it's going to show up off yeah, of the races. Yeah, so I think, I think a good indication that this is time consuming was the fact that it took quite a while for us to export it and to open it up. So this is the one thing that actually costs time mm -hmm. is loading up the project. If you have a ton of textures, as we do now, if we have a ton of 3D objects, as indeed we have here, it, it's better yet to make sure that you prepared it well for your colleague or for your uh, partner on location to make things right. So uh, make do homework right so there is no suffer on location. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes even more yeah, I think like that kind of because especially like once these files get big, you're going to be sending like two gigabyte, one gigabyte, you know, notch blocks to people. And the last thing you want somebody to do is like somebody on a mobile network somewhere spent like four hours downloading a one gigabyte file because, you know, we're in the middle of some job site and the Internet's not like plugged in proper. And oh, my God, we finally got it. Also, oh, my God, we forgot to expose I see a parameter. So there's two things I want to mention. I already I actually opened the chat as well, which is pretty cool. I see there's a lot of things happening. Um, yes, there was a name of how is this thing called. So I presume we're talking still about the FX player. So yeah. it's literally called FX player host. And you can find it under the C drive or your Windows drive, program files, notch, and it's literally there, FX player host DirectX 11. I actually have it on a short, uh, short handle because mm. I use it quite a lot. It's very, very handy before you give it away to your colleagues who are working with the media server or where you're blocking any other uh, situation. Yeah. Um, now let's talk about file size since Albers mentioned this for a second. Every single 3D model, texture, uh, and font, basically anything is stored in the resources. The only thing that is not stored in the resources and is held as a relative path is video sources. So if you have a video file, it's not going to come together with the DFX file. You will have to include it externally. Now, the reason why it's not stored inside is for the sheer saving of space. And likely, that video file is just for the reference. Now, in this case, we could have used video files for uh, these squares here or mm -hmm. for these uh, 16 by niners. Uh, and it would have only been a reference for us to preview things. How do they look? Because we will swap it out with the signals and touch designer. So there's absolutely no need by default to include it. However, if you find yourself in a situation where you need to include it, let me just see if I have some kind of a video available 
I'm not going to look for a video now, but if you do need to include a, a video, just make sure to tick off do not embed resource. Oh, so in a cool. video case, this will be available. If you untick it, that video file is as well in the DFX file. Interesting. It's to mention. So that kind of goes back to what I was asking earlier, which is like, you know, if you wanted to have something like a test content inside your project, but you didn't want it to export because you knew that like, you know, for instance, I'm going to take over that video texture in Touch Designer. That's an easy way to have just some asset in the project that you can look at, right click on it, do not embed, and then like, then you're off to the race and then you don't have to worry about like this big asset also getting hauled off to, to the block. Mm. Mm. So depending on what you're building, like sometimes it's not really needed. Sometimes it's actually very, very handy as Helbers is pointing mm -hmm. out. I just want you guys to know that there's such option to choose. Well, is there anything that came in in a chat uh, window that we could ad address <laughs> in upcoming uh, whatever time we still have? Bro, just lots of love. Everyone says you're amazing. I think there was one oh, heart. Thanks, guys. There, was, really there was a 10 that. to 1 heart ratio for you, 10 hearts, 1 heart for me. But I, I love my one heart. I think it's going to I think it's going to change drastically we'll flip on Wednesday. On Wednesday we'll flip the, the heart the ratios. Um, but I think with that said, <laughs> I'm going to switch off your screen back to us both on screen a little bit bigger. Yep, sounds good. So folks, yeah, I'm just going to I'm just going to quickly mention yet again cuz I feel that I owe this to you guys. Uh, we were fast and loose and we were having fun here. If you're looking for specific information that again will be available Friday as a download with all the appropriate explanations next to it. And I, you, I can't stress that enough. Like, so I think one of the things is there, there's a side of this where we're, we're fast and loose, but we also didn't want to be super polished because we really want to show like this really was the work of less than a week of us. Like the first time we talked about what we're going to do, was last week on uh, Monday at like 11 a.m. Elvers is bringing out a very good point. Uh, we did this because none of you have a luxury of three months preparation for a project. And if we were to spend three months doing this, polishing it out and showing it to you, it would be unjust because that's not why you would choose touch or notch. Mm. You would choose this because you anticipate that you've got the brief Monday, you need to deliver it Friday. And that was our mantra. So we took one week and we came up with the brief ourselves Monday. We wrote down a little document. I went home to do the design part of it, like the 3D layouts and such. Elbers went home to do the games and, and the logics and all the things that will be required in touch. At some point, I made a little test patch that he could uh, load into touch and double check things. And I progressed on uh, design and he progressed on the programming. So we spent a couple of days both and we ended up with this result right here. And I, I, I think that's, you know, if we had to embody the whole week long event or the, the fun of it is, it's really possible to make this kind of high quality content in Notch quick that then gets put into a touch designer media server quick that does all this kind of crazy interactive stuff uh, and it doesn't have to be this really intimidating, crazy, you know, you don't have to stress about it. It's possible. So I think that's one of the fun things we'll see on Wednesday. Also, we'll have a very similar kind of breakdown where in that touch project, we got a couple mini games. We'll talk about those kind of high level, but I'm going to assume you're going to put like better content than my, than my mini games in your project. But, you know, we're going to talk about how the Twitch chat comes in, how we kind of, uh, get the notch block into our project, how we get it all set up. So. Uh, for folks that are just joining us a little bit late, this is a three-day event this week. So we got the Monday today, which was a lot of us going over the notch side of things with Armin, uh, who we can't thank enough for. I mean, I, thank you, my friend. It's, it's a pleasure, as always, working with you. It's it's, it's, it's great to be here. Uh, I'll just be honest. This is a tight and nice community you have here. Yeah. Um, and then Wednesday is going to be... Armin's back with us again Wednesday, but we're going to be focusing a little bit more on the touch designer side of things, where I'm going to take all the work that Armin did today, bring it into touch, get it all rigged up, and then with the intention that on Friday, we have a working like online Twitch-controlled installation where you guys can control through different kinds of like voting metrics, what's happening on the notch block parameters, uh, and we'll be here also kind of like in the corner. Similar, you know, we're going to have that layout, the same working layout that we had. And then, you know, you'll have like the main output in installation in the middle. And then we'll be here doing like Q&A, taking questions, talking about the process a little bit more. 
And since the files will be available for download, if somebody will be curious enough to actually download it and will double check, mm -hmm. uh, feel free to ask questions right there, right then, Friday session. That's 100%. exactly why it was. Hmm. 100%. And, um, Perfect. So with that said, you know, we're signing off here. Thank you, everybody in the chat. I, I see, I, Armin, you got the channel. There's a lot of love in the chat. Thank you all for coming. I mean, if we were here alone, it wouldn't be as fun for having all you folks here with us following us along on our hilarious little journey. Um, so we will see you Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern, same bat time, same bat channel, same bat people. <laughs> That's, that one really went off the edge, <laughs> uh, the cliff real quick. Um, but we will see you on Wednesday. <laughs> if you have any questions, let us know. Uh, the recording of this will be posted up online. We'll try and get it up uh, I think the YouTube one will be available right after this is finished. Uh, Twitch one should also be available. So if you did join late and you want to catch up before Wednesday, by all means, both of those recordings will be available. And if you come up with alternative names for uh, for Elbers as a rapper, please uh, submit them. We will be happy to check them out. I think it's going to be well worth I think it, yeah, bringing I think up good. the names. That's going to be the goal of this week is to get me my rap name. Uh, my official Wu-Tang name will be the goal of the Friday. So. I just want to say that if I yeah, go get it. to have a name, I want to have a country name. A country music Please. name. I think it's going to... Yes. Here's yes. a challenge for chat. Yes. Armin needs a country music name and I need a rap name. And we're a country rap duo. That's what we are. The story checks winning. out. We the story winning. checks out. This is a winning sequence. So with that said... <laughs> little birds. That's good. The little birds, <laughs> not bad. Leo's coming in hot. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. We will see you on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Hit that follow button. That way you get notified when we're going live, both on YouTube and on Twitch. And with that said, thanks everybody for joining us. Thank you guys. See you Wednesday. Goodbye.